starting now all right we'll see if you youtube will work i just don't know if i'll get twitch to work i, I took your advice and the same thing happened to me uh when we were streaming on elden ring okay so we're onwards and upwards See if this is working. No. All right, welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Hope everybody's well. You're not frozen. I am going live. Oh, it says Nice Gaming is live on Twitch. Interesting. Don't believe the rumors. <laughs> All right, I am I'm uh, good to go. Richie, how you doing? Welcome on in. All right. <clears throat> Welcome on in, everybody. Welcome on in. Appreciate you guys being here. This is going to be a fun one. I can't, especially uh, after how hype we appear to be while watching the fighter showcase. I'm curious to see if that was widespread. Um, I didn't have it. I literally have not looked at the forums. Wow, Virus, thank you so much for subscribing, buddy. Appreciate that. I have not looked at the forums. Thank you so much, man. So I'm curious to see what the rest of the community uh, has to say. Uh, we, I mean, obviously, I've seen a couple people chat in Discord. I haven't seen anything bad, but um, Reddit, forums, places like that, I'm pretty sure we can find some sort of uh, <laughs> outlandish take or... Uh, Deferring take, I should say. Oop, that is the sound of my own voice. Welcome on in, everybody. I'll get the link posted in Discord, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right. How was your weekend, Nice? It was really good, really good, actually. How about yours? I was good. It was good. Had a nice holiday weekend, and... uh 
girls turned out to be better at getting Easter eggs than I thought. So I kind of, kind of messed that up. I expected it to last a little bit longer and it, it did not. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I know we have a lot to really get to today. Mm -hmm. Um, did we want to, uh, well, I guess we'll chat kind of recap things, but did we want to discuss the, um, did we want to start off with the forum post or did we want to get into some other things first? Um, it, it's you know, up to actually, you. It's up to you. Yeah, I want to, yeah. I wanted to get, I guess I wanted to get feedback from you because it's been, it's been a few days. We were obviously excited watching it in real time. Uh, I liked what you said earlier. It was the same thought I had to, to kick it off. Has anything changed? Have you have you kind of gone back? Are you not as excited? Are you just as excited? What are what are your overall thoughts? How you doing, Tatamo? So funny enough, after watching, you know, there's always, you know, you haven't seen the gameplay in about a month. You haven't seen the game, haven't gotten any news updates. And so you watch the stream and of course you're just hyped. Everything seems great usually for the most part, right? And then after your third time rewatching it, maybe halfway through the month, you're like, you know what? It was it was all right. It was good. Mm -hmm. This one, I'm sorry. This will just be amazing. There's no amount of times I can watch this to where I start seeing flaws or I'm just like, ah, I didn't enjoy it. Maybe I exaggerate. No, like I am still in the same frame of mind. I am hype. I am really loving this. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, my, my thoughts haven't changed. What about yours? I, I'm honestly, I'm the exact same way. I, I, it's just like, I went into it with expectations. I, I did a video that came out on Sunday and my thoughts were, Hey, I, I, these were my things that I wanted to see. This is what I was hoping to see. This is how I kind of envisioned the fighter to happen. And they hit all that and then some. And so I just can't sit here and be like, no, actually it was a bad live stream because yeah. it's, like I, they hit everything I wanted. And uh, I mean, you and I, we both play melee. We play melee brawlers. We play the in your face type of class or archetype on other games and other pain points that we have had with that type of play, with that type of play style kind of, I mean, before testing, it seems somewhat alleviated. And so that's my perspective on it. It's like, okay, well, until we test it, we were not going to sure we're not going to be sure how good these things are, but at least they're addressing the things that we know we've had issues with in other games in the past. So, yes, uh, completely agree. Um, I, I for one, uh, oh, and to just uh, Tatamo says during your reaction stream, Rive came in and said it was six out of ten. I was shocked. Did he explain? He said six. I don't remember him saying something higher. Or am I thinking of when Warrior came in? uh either way um yeah i i don't that i don't know i don't get it um actually i get it as a mage player that fire seems scary from a lot of comments i got on my videos and just looking around the community i feel like anyone that talked illy of the showcase or felt like it was bad or doing too much it's players that looked at the fighter and said okay this looks cool how does this affect my archetype and play style a lot of people that were hyped for ranger a lot of people that wanted to be mages. I mm -hmm. think they saw this and it was like, okay, do you guys really need that many gut closers? Yeah. <laughs> you no, know? they are used to being safe at a distance. And the fighter has a lot of ways of punishing you. And, and that one status effect, uh, wounds, that punishes you for moving. Like, I think a lot of people um, really, really looked at it that way. If it didn't really, uh, if it looked too scary for their main, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, heck, a cleric might've saw the fighter and been like, you know, I don't like the fact that that one debuff reduces my, uh, you know, healing received, et cetera, et cetera, or a tank might've felt the same way. So you never know if there's some bias when people are uh, judging these archetype showcase, they may actually be judging it from a point of balance, which is probably not something we should be worrying about right now, right? That's probably not what the uh, intent of the showcase is. So yeah. um, I think you got to really look at things from an objective, uh, well, a, a different point of view and just say, hey, did this look fun? Did it feel like it flowed well? Does it look like fun combat? And just leave it there. Yeah, my my perspective so far, are like, guys, we're, we're the testing people. We, we definitely want to go in and test and, and provide balanced feedback and those sorts of things. And so it's going to sound kind of funny coming from me when I say this. These archetype previews for me, it's literally... How fucking cool is this? 
Like, like that's, that's how I'm rating these things. Does it look yes. cool? Because everything else can be tweaked. Everything else can be adjusted. We've got a sliding scale for damage, for gap closing distance, all these other sorts of things. But if it doesn't look cool, nobody's going to want to play it. And so it's the same thing with the same thing with the Ranger. It's the same thing with like every single archetype that they've shown. I want it to look cool. I want people to like, look at this and be like, this is what I want to play. And that's what I got. Like when I was reading comments as well is a lot of people are like, you know, I wasn't interested in fighter, but now I am. That's what you want yes. people to yes. hear. That's what you want Intrepid to hear about just about every archetype from somebody. Hey, I wasn't interested in this, but now I'm interested because it looks cool. And then we'll figure it out later. Very well said. All right, someone banned that Vex guy. Um, So someone had a question here. Uh, Shimura on YouTube said, uh, what's up, Nice? Do you think Nico will still be unimpressed with this showcase? Also, I love Is There No One Else's Name as it reminds me of Troy movie. Take me back yeah. to old cinema. <laughs> so I would have, I would, if I was, uh, if I, I'm not speaking for Nico, I don't know what his current take is or if he's watched the new showcase, but I would have to imagine he's over there feeling like maybe, I mean, not that he just takes back everything he said or thought. I don't think it's that dramatic, right? Um, I'm sure he's a guy of his convictions, but what I'm saying is I'm sure he's feeling at least to some extent that he might have spoke too soon, uh, at least for a couple of uh, his complaint subject matters, right? I, I would imagine, because, um, I mean, he wasn't the only one. A lot of people were feeling like gloomy and doubtful and you see the community just get revitalized just from Steven posting a picture of the fighter being a Renkai. Mm -hmm. And then of course the showcase itself, the showcase itself and how lovely was that melee combat. And we got to see the action camera. We got to see this hybrid system actually uh, in place and actually active. So, I mean, I would imagine he's gone back on some things, but um, I would imagine he was impressed or liked the showcase. I'm actually very curious on what he thought actually. And, um, what else was that? Oh, uh, Fan Fangalon said, by the way, the fighter also got a skill they didn't show that a single target knockdown that sleeps the target for 10 seconds, though breaks it the target's damage. I did not see that. Oh, wow. That sounds ridiculous. But it sounds appropriate at the same time. I, I wonder why they're going to sleep again. That's a, I don't know. It's an interesting one. That's something I feel like should be re uh, reserved for the bard. Um, I could kind of see, obviously, how it is in the mage kit. That that makes sense. But a fighter, why the sleep? I guess knockout, but I don't know. I, I could see that brawler knocks you out, but uh. But I, you know what's cool about it? And like I said earlier, not to contradict myself, talking about balance this early, mage sleep looks OP. <laughs> that's the only skill I've always been like, dang, a ranged AOE sleep. That's freaking awesome. But um, yeah. The skill grayed out icon in the skill tree. Okay. Well, I actually have a link to the a skill tree that we're probably uh we'll have time to take a look at earlier. So we'll actually go through, give our opinions in a deep dive of the skills later. Um, so what we are first off, let's do a proper introduction. Um okay. and I appreciate you guys uh being here with us. So this is a special episode. I know, oh 40, you know, the big four oh, no one says that, but <laughs> Uh, first off, this is episode 40. That's right, episode 40. I uh, yes. can't believe we've done this 40 times talking about this game that's not even out yet. That is amazing. Some of you that's been here since the start, some of you that came in at episode 13, some of you episode 28, some of you episode 40. Hello, welcome on in. Uh, this is amazing. We literally, like literally could not do this without you. I know that's a cliche to throw around and it's so easy to say, but we literally couldn't do this without you. Um, if you're, if you've been an avid watcher of us, you know, sometimes it's rare for us to stay on topic and that's because you guys in chat go crazy. Like, well, you know, we'll, we'll go off on some crazy tangent and just, and that breeds another discussion and you guys are constantly, um, giving us talking points, if you will, like we'll come into stream. We've told this before, but we'll come to stream with a plan. Like, okay, we're going to talk about this bullet point, this bullet point, this bullet point. And if we got time, we'll get to this. We get to like two of them. And then it's just like, then chat, we, we just end up going in another direction. Some news drops or someone in chat says like a crazy take. And we're like, you know what, huh, let's dissect this. 
So we really couldn't do this without you. And so we appreciate you guys. You guys, we've always wanted this format to not feel preachy. Like, hey, I'm you, basically you guys don't come here and talk to the Ashes of Creation expert. I've been following this game for 10 years since Steven was playing it on tabletop. And I know everything about the lore. And I know everything that Steven has ever said, even in private. Like I, <laughs> I, I've read the, I read the wiki to my kids at night. That's not what you get with our show. It's more of like, a, obviously we research and play, you know, are into the game as well, but we're never on a pedestal. We want the format to be more like, hey, we're a bunch of people sitting at a, a geeky, nerdy bar just talking ashes of creation and giving our opinions, you know, you know, we wanted that to be a inclusive thing where it's not just me and else as the star talking down or preaching to people like, Hey, this is how ashes of creation should be. No, it's like, Hey, how do you feel? What do you guys think? Here's my take. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Huh? You know, and we've had that before. We've had a lot of disagreements. Everyone has different opinions. We're all coming from different MMOs and that's kind of where we're going with this. And uh, with that out the way, I want to say, um welcome on in to voices of vera episode 40 with myself nice gaming and is there no one else and you the voices of vera welcome on into episode 40 you guys welcome on in i can't believe it's been 40 episodes man like it, it still feels like we're like we're 40 episodes in and we're still and it almost feels like we're just still new to this you know what i mean yes. and, and we're like we're only a few months oh I, this is another thing i wanted to bring up we're only a few months away from a year of doing this podcast nice, which is crazy. Like, like really? Like if you think if you think about it, I think we started in June or, or July. So I think we I think we started in July. Yeah. So we're we're only wow. like we're only like three months away. And as of a couple of days ago, uh it is now quarter two of twenty twenty four. And that yes. means that we are officially I know people we're we're still potentially six months away, but that means technically we are one quarter away from Alpha Two for Ashes of Creation, which is pretty damn exciting. So Yes, yes, yes. Uh so um that's insane. I yeah, I actually don't know our one year uh date. That's cool. I didn't think oh, about I'm that, gonna, man. Gonna... I'm gonna take a the one over. year, man, we 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 having a party. We're not even gonna talk about Ashes of Creation. <laughs> We're just gonna play music. We're gonna have some drinks, taking shots with chat, and just like hopefully be playing the game too. <laughs> this is uh never know. But um let's let me catch up on chat, then we could probably get into our first uh July twentieth. Our first topic. July twentieth. July twentieth is when I uploaded the first episode on YouTube. But yours is probably official because you were live streaming. I was streaming yeah. through Twitch. So, so we can assume it's July for sure, though. So, yeah, okay. like 18, 19, 20, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Tangent says, love when I'm driving home and I see voices of Vera pop up live. Let's <laughs> go. My only disappointment was that the foot icon wasn't skill, wasn't a kicking skill. It's still a weapon swing. You know what? That's something. That's a, actually a good suggestion, Satamo. Like have some stuff in a fighter's kit, like actually deal with your limbs. Well, maybe they find it tough for coding because dwarf hitboxes, a huge tall nar. Maybe that's the complication they ran into. Yeah, reading the wiki to kids at night. Yeah. People have been echoing WoW and BDO dev time and claiming AOC should be done already. Do you think people are misunderstanding the difficulty of an ND MMO creating large scale MMO? So this yes. is something we've talked about before. Um, I think they are um uh people like to bring up how wow took uh who said this in our, our chat the other day i think it was jamie it might have been jamie but someone was like wow took four or five years to make i was like well that was back then they didn't have that as much to do like there wasn't like there was there wasn't the pressure there was back then as well and yeah. i mean it's it's blizzard i know they probably wasn't as big back then but there's that there's a you got a factor where Ashes of Creation was, how many people they started their team with. You got to factor COVID. I mean, that's unprecedented, literally. So, you know, we got to think about these kind of things when we say stuff like that. Yeah, I, I'm going to go go and take a peek now. But the, the more recent MMOs that came out five to ten years ago, I'm pretty sure Elder Scrolls Online was seven years. I want to say Final Fantasy fourteen was somewhere around the seven-year mark. And if you do a Google search and it says how long does it take to make MMORPGs, they'll give you, uh, like, a lot of the ones that, the more recent ones are anywhere from four to eight years. And so mm. 
So you look at that and you're like, okay, well, we're, we're, and people jump to it and they go, okay, well, we're at year seven for Ashes of Creation. Why are we, we're, we should almost be done. We're at the tail end. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is they're comparing triple A MMORPGs with hundreds of developers. So they got started in year one yes. with hundreds of developers creating their specific game. And I, I think, and this is a, like, this is, I don't know if I've said this on this, on this podcast yet or not, but when you look at what Ash of Creation is trying to do, I, in my opinion, it's one of the most ambitious projects I've probably ever seen as far yeah, as like, exactly. what, so, so you have one of the most ambitious projects that started, like I, I was, I did research on this a couple months ago and I'm pretty sure it was somewhere around 2018 or 2019, they hit 100 developers. So yeah. for the last five years, they've they've had somewhere around a hundred developers. In as of last month, they hit two hundred developers. So that's that's great. But like you look at Blizzard, you look at Bethesda, you look at all these other companies, they have anywhere from three hundred to a thousand developers working on a game, depending on how big it is. And so mm -hmm. so you you have to add in like okay, they have half the development team with a way more ambitious project we need to acknowledge that this game is probably going to take 10 years to make. It's, it's going to take in my, like, I, I think it's going to take 10 years. And so, and that's more on the ambitious side. I wouldn't be shocked if it takes 11 years. And so that's where I'm coming from. And so when people compare it, I think it's great that they're comparing intrepid to these other big gaming studios. Cause they're <laughs> seeing the output and they're like, this is awesome. Like this is, this is better than a lot of stuff that we're seeing. It should be out soon. But knowing what the actual output for this company is, it's just like they don't have that kind of manpower to do that. And so uh -huh. acknowledging those limitations, I think, is important. And, and coming from that perspective is important. So you're going to see people, you know, bring those things up like, oh, it's not out yet. Well, yeah, it's also not a AAA gaming studio and they're not cutting yeah. corners. So um, you brought up a great point there with, uh, you know. We don't, they didn't exactly always have the staffing they have, which is about 200. You know, they didn't always have that amount of people. Honestly, I think Ashes of Creation is so ambitious that if Steven was the head of Blizzard and he had all the power, he didn't have to answer to the corporate board. They said, hey, we trust you. Take your time. You don't have to rush to any deadline. Take your time. Do it right. Even though we're a AAA studio, we're going to treat you like an indie dev and let you kind of just flow with it. Yep. I think even if you gave Stephen all those resources, let's say a team of 450 developers to 500 dedicated to this one MMO, Ashes of Creation is so ambitious that it would probably still be having its same uh, development time length uh, in theory. I, I mean, little maybe, maybe if you factor in COVID and a lot of other stuff, maybe some things will still be the case. But I think even if it was the same situation, same amount of resources off the rip, I think it'll still the the game is so ambitious that if you want to release it right, you know, right, like with the way Steven yeah. wants it to come out, then yeah, it it, it might still be uh taking a while. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, Crash says, "What's up? Your favorite class looking good? Yeah, dude, it's my favorite class now too. I'm no longer tank fighter. I'm fighter tank at the moment. Until I see a little <laughs> bit more of the tank, maybe I don't you know. Just, you just wait till Rogue comes out. You're gonna be a stealthy boy in no time." <laughs> uh shimmer says congrats guys i like finding all these new aoc content creators shout out to my new favorite aoc creator sticks uh yo stakino is awesome we've had him on here before as well um blizzard has successful franchise and lore to base the mmo off of instead of creating original lore on a fly yep that's another factor too the setbacks might actually have been helpful since ue5 came out while they weren't so far deep into moving to ue5 it was a lot faster and easier yes uh just as a comparison for two things that was recently said one for development time Throne of liberty has been about what 11 to 12 years now and we're about to get that soon here in yeah. uh you know non-korea uh, so do keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, Dawn of Liberty is UE4. So even without them, like imagine if they went to try to go to UE5 and then people talk about development time. I rarely see people complaining about Dawn and Liberty <laughs> taking a long, or have taken a long time. Not once, even when it got pushed back that first, well, I want to say that was about the third pushback or a second. Uh, it was supposed to release, I think, December of last year or year before last. And they didn't. Um, and no one, I, there was no, ups, no one was really like, people were upset. They were disappointed, but it was nothing like if AOC alpha two was to get pushed back or there was no Goodness. fan base. It was not even close yet. It's had a much longer development cycle than ashes of creation. And why do you guys think that? 
Could it be that actually they people know that Ashes of Creation is a threat to their current MMO? Could it be that they know this game actually has the potential to shake the genre up? You know, like there's a lot more ambition, a lot more hope and stuff like that for this game when you compare it to Throne and Liberty, where people are just like, huh, hope we get it in America soon. Yeah, Whereas I, I want to try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that for that. That might keep me busy for a couple of months. You know, whereas Ashes of Creation were like <laughs> scratching her neck, like, huh, huh is it quarter three yet? <laughs> quarter three? <laughs> there is a difference, and people need to realize that. Um, and I hate making the same comparisons, but Throne and Liberty is a good example of that. So is Grand Theft Auto 6. I know, non MMO, but I love bringing it up that no yep. one is sitting here making angry videos like, man, where the heck is Grand Theft Auto 6? No, because you know it's going to be good when you finally get it. You're just like, take your time. That's Grand Theft Auto 6. That game is going to, I'm going to play that game for a decade. And I think that's what uh, I think that's a mindset or perspective. Maybe a lot of people should consider adapting. Yeah, and and some of those games, to be to be fair, they they have the track record. You know, like you have yes, they they have the track record. They have proof that other games have come out and and they've done well. It's like the same way when you see a FromSoft game drop, you're just like, okay, yeah, well this is true. gonna be full. This is gonna be awesome. It's FromSoft. Okay, let's go. And so they they've they've developed that rep, and I think some of that is is you know Intrepid hasn't built that rep yet. They're working on their first game, and and so sure. you have a lot of people going. Oh, it's a scam, you know, <laughs> and a scam and Sounds some people to be true. Yeah. And some people would rather be early than to be right. And it's just, it, it is what it is. But yeah, I, I think, I think a lot of those people will be wrong and it won't really matter. They're like, okay, I was wrong. I get an awesome game, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Go back. Welcome on in. One of my favorite episodes of South Park right there. Um, Favor says, huge misstep from Intrepid making the fighter archetype like they did. You look at the skills, gap closers, movement, the debuffs, the burst potential, Asmon is going to beg for this to be wild too. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. I think a lot of people, uh, we've talked about this before, but I think a lot of people want their MMO, just an updated version of it, because theirs went the crap, you know, and they're going to try to make this like theirs. And yep. I think you want to listen to the person that doesn't want their current MMO. Like a lot of, let me not say a lot of people, but some people, some people like to make fun of me or try to belittle my opinion before they even hear it. You know why? Because I played New World. Because I played ESO. Like, oh, this is an ESO Andy. Huh? Don't listen to him. He plays New World. Have you listened to my takes? Have you listened to my opinions on Ashes <laughs> of Creation? No. You just jump down my throat or you jump down your opinion in your echo chamber or something like that without hearing me because you expect me to want what I'm playing right now. But the reason we're looking forward to Ashes of Creation is to play something different because something's wrong with our current yes. MMOs. Everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. I don't care what game you play. You're looking forward to Ashes of Creation because it's Ashes of Creation. You're not trying to change it to be your current MMO. We want something different. We are not going to push the genre forward by doing the same thing we've already done. You get what I'm saying? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, it's to, to, to piggyback off that nice, that's, that's very well said. Um, you, you try to let those other opinions bake, you know, and they just came out terribly. And so, yeah, I, I can't disagree with that because when you look at the entire MMORPG space as a whole, people that are looking at this specific game aren't happy with whatever they're playing in one way or another. They're looking yes. forward to something new and it doesn't matter what you're playing. Like you may be happy 70% of the time with whatever your current game is. You may say it's good, but you're looking at ashes or you're looking at, you're listening to this podcast because you're like, okay, well, what's coming up on the horizon? What, what is the next thing like that I could potentially move to? And yeah. so I, <laughs> I, I made a joke yesterday. Uh, nice knows about this, but on, on Twitter, I've, I've had a lot of people, like I, I did my video talking about the fighter gap closer and people are like, oh, mm. Guild Wars 2 has this, World of Warcraft has, has this, they, they have these specific things. Guys, I haven't played every single MMO in the space. I, I haven't, so mm. I don't know. But I made a joke that I don't want to play, I, I don't play World of Warcraft because it's a bad game. And it's funny because I play ESO and I play New World, which I also mm -hmm. consider to be not very good or bad games right now. Mm -hmm. And so and so I thought it was funny because like we we all should realize that we're we're all in this space because we don't like our current game. Either we're bored with it or or whatever. And so the funny thing is is I I can't tell you how often I get it, but on on YouTube videos, people like, oh, this game's better. This game's better. Like, like people are being elitist about the MMO space, and it's like, guys, we're all just on a pile of shit right now. Like, like there's yeah. no, there's nothing bringing the space forward. And like, 
all the best games right now are like 10 years old. And so it would be nice if something new came forward and competed. And I don't care what it is. I just want something new. So. Well said. Yeah. Like everybody just need to collectively come to an understanding that we're looking forward to Ashes of Creation. And it's okay to have fun in your current MMO. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, we're, we're buying time and that's okay. But don't like get on such a high horse because of what someone else is choosing to play in the meantime or what they're basing their experience pre-Ashes for. Yeah. Um, so, and like Fox said here, uh, everyone's still going to play no matter how much they're hating. Um, yeah. A lot of people will see the direction of the combat with fighter and legit fight for this game to change. The combat is starting to look so good, dude. It's looking so good. Like I, man, and and we could talk crap about Throne of Liberty. I can't wait to play. I'm actually excited for it. Um, especially for those of you that seen my lip, my Throne of Liberty review, I enjoyed the combat. Like I, I know you guys will. Some of you may put me uh, like on the guillotine for this, but I felt like Throne of Liberty's combat I and I, I was almost scared to say this was a better tab slash hybrid combat than Guild Wars 2 like and I love Guild Wars 2 combat um in terms of a uh, tab target games but it felt a lot smoother and faster and uh it was definitely a true hybrid uh it felt like a hybrid combat that I think is the closest thing we're going to have to prepare for Ashes of Creation. I used to say that was Guild Wars 2 at the playing Throne of Liberty and looking at especially this recent fighter showcase. You guys should um, definitely, I'm not saying commit or drop everything you're doing in your current MMO, whatever for it, but give it a try. Just give it a try. Um, I really like the combat in Throne of Liberty. Do I think it's my going to be like my go-to? No. Do I think it's going to um, like, you know, like, my, oh my gosh, I'm a Throne of Liberty fanboy? No. but. Do I think that game is going to carry me until Ashes of Creation? Potentially, just to buy time until AOC and play something with a similar combat? Because right now, playing ESO, New World, when we try Mortal Online 2 soon, <laughs> none of those, especially Mortal Online 2, yeah. is even on the spectrum of what we're <laughs> going to be getting with Ashes of Creation uh, combat-wise, right? Um, so, yeah, anyways, I, I'm just looking forward to that and, that. and that's really, I'll be honest, like one of the main reasons, but yeah, I digress. Can I can I provide a hot take here? And this Ooh. is it, it. It may not be too hot. You'll pro, you might agree with me, but in my opinion, like a lot of people have asked about action camera, tab target, action combat, like these sorts of things. And if you haven't played this type of game, I totally understand. In my opinion, I think Throne and Liberty is plays very similarly to how current ashes of creation looks i'm not saying it's better i'm not saying like it's it's as close combat wise or anything there's a lot of things missing like as far as like the the power feel that throne of liberty has but when i was you like i i was playing great sword dagger when i was when i was playing throne of liberty when i was trying it and a lot of the animations and interactions felt and look very similar to what ashes of creation is and it also has oh, yeah. tab target it also has action it has the action camera and so my perspective is is the fact that throne and liberty is free to play uh before you get into whatever potential issues with pay to win is down the future for end game you can at least hop on and try it and see if mm -hmm. this type of system is what's good for you like if if you're like okay this is a free sample to let you know like will i be interested in ashes of creation when it comes out and i think it's i think it's a good i i enjoyed it man i really did i i had an issue with the i stopped playing because of the bot issue that they were having over there but apparently yeah. they're policing that and so if they're policing bots and allowing endgame to thrive then then yeah i'll play longer um did steven mention if the gap closer needs a target uh i'm not sure if blitz did uh blitz probably did blitz probably did um, and to respond to you, um, no, I don't think that's a hot take. At, well, it might be to some people, especially those that haven't played. But no, nothing is closer to Ashes of Creation Combat, what we've seen of Ashes of Creation Combat, than Throne of Liberty. There, there, there's just no way around it. Like, it literally is the closest thing. Like, especially as many hours as I put on Throne of Liberty and just watching the fighter showcase, especially recently. Yes. Like, um, the only thing, well, some... Throne of Liberty skills are AOE. Like uh, you, you can aim it in a certain direction, and it's AOE. But only thing Ashes of Creation has different from what I can t uh, see and what we've been told is going to be in the game is 
one, the basic attacks aren't AOE and Throne of Liberty. So when you click and you tap to a target, like it's only hitting that target with your basic attacks. Like the great sword is only going to swing and hit that one person. So that's something yep. that Ashley Creation will have on Throne of Liberty. But one thing they do have in common is the choosing the basic attacks. How you doing, Makashi? The basic attacks is something that they're both doing where uh, Steven said you can um, pretty much if you have a bow and a great sword, you can choose which one of those are going to be your basic attacks. And Throne of Liberty has that is that literally the same thing. Yes. And that's literally pretty much the only point of bar swapping in Throne of Liberty is to change your basic attacks. So in Throne of Liberty, you can have um, one melee, one range, or you can just do two melee. So, you know, that's what I did. whereas Ashes of Creation have a range slot and a melee slot, main hand, offhand. That's the differential things there. But as far as the actual combat, the actual engaging in combat and aiming things, using the action camera, or if you choose to go traditional tab, like, dude, I was watching some Dawn and Liberty gameplay yesterday, and my goodness, I ain't going to lie, it looks so crap. <laughs> and and yeah. I know that sounds weird to say that after everything I just said, right? But when I play, oh, the combat feels good, and it looks good. I feel like it's good to watch. Biased, I know, but I feel like it's good to watch. But some people, they play in that tab camera, and they have it tabbed and they have it zoomed out to space yeah, to where a point they're yeah. they're watching their character from a telescope and they're doing the click the drag they're zoomed out like crazy and it's just like they're just clicking on things and they got that almost vertical camera like it's an ARPG I don't even think that's fun to watch I, I don't go look at go Google or YouTube search Throne of Liberty PvP and then go look at the background footage from my Throne of Liberty review. We're, it's like we're playing two different games. Yeah, I, I had to zoom in a little bit on my character for the same reason. I'm like, I you're gonna have Unreal Engine 4 with these cool like costumes that you could put on your character and shit, and then you're gonna zoom all the way out so you can't see it. That's a miss. <laughs> like that, that's I was like, I don't care. I, I mean, I know that some people are playing like a lot of games I play to be as high end of a competitive player as possible. But when I'm leveling up, I want my character to look cool also. And so I, I'm gonna yeah. zoom in a little bit. And so yeah, I'm not I, I wanna be clear that as far as the animations go for great sword and dagger i think i think a lot of it plays the same obviously throne and liberty isn't going to say have the same power fantasy as like ashes of creation is with their archetypes and everything and and the different feels of different class because they don't have that it's all weapons like you don't have a specific yeah. class or archetype in throne of liberty you uh -huh. pick up weapons and away you go so it's going to be a lot of bare bones things but you'll get an idea of tab action camera system from that game and it's it's an unreal engine for as far as MMO stories go, what I've gotten into so far, it's not bad. Like it's really one of the better ones that I've gotten into so far. So yeah. like it's, I'm not saying it's great. It, like you're using the MMO precursor as far as MMO stories go. Like it's like, it's yeah. okay. So uh, Rage, welcome on in. Hexboon says that kind of POV is not immersive. I don't get why people do it. And that's my main gripe with it. I know it's more strategical. I know it's better, you know, especially for field, you know, battle awareness, but yeah. Um, and someone had a good question here. Uh, Paranaut says, would you pay 30 bucks a month for ALC? So it's too early hmm. for me to say that. Yeah, I, I, I can't justify that. That's more expensive or that's more expensive than any game per month right now. Any subscription. Hell, yeah. that's what a lot of people pay for well i'm exaggerating but probably their internet or some people's phone bills or you, you see where i'm going with this a netflix subscription or you know that that's kind of um i think that might be pushing it <laughs> uh i think they gotta really establish themselves before they even think about that kind of price point um yeah i, I don't know about that one like maybe i i don't know like forever nah would i pay 30 a month to like try it I'll do it for one month. <laughs> That's a a double A AA game price per month. Yeah, yeah that, that's in that yeah, that's insane. That'd be a no for me. Like the game would have to be really, really good for me to want yeah. to do that. I think it's going to be, but me thinking and me knowing mm -hmm. are are two different things. So yeah, I can't I can't say that. Yeah, thirty bucks a month is uh, definitely something. That's double than what I'm expecting right now. So. It, <laughs> that's literally double so yeah um and so as i mentioned earlier you guys get to you know you guys are always a great chat and getting us off subject with these questions and very great questions like that one um so let's go ahead and start getting into some of the topics that we have planned for today okay um 
else, if you want to pull up the article from massivelyop.com, you'll find it yes. in Voices of Vera uh, previews. Yep. Um, so, and for those of you that don't know, we do have a Discord. I hope it's in the description. If not, click exclamation mark Discord on YouTube. I'm not sure if I got it together on the other platform. Um, or just ask ask for a link. Or Hey, actually, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll just do that. I'm not going to lie. I almost did my own live stream on this yesterday. And then I saw you posted it. I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, nice. Just so you guys know, like we do have our Voices of Era podcast and we're doing that. And we're also both just occasionally doing live streams separately as well. Just to, just to branch out, talk with community and everything. And so occasionally, if you guys follow our channels, you'll see a live stream from Nice or myself, depending on, you know, what's being talked about that week. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And here, I'll do it over here as well. Uh, you got it pulled up? Yep, I do. I wouldn't pay thirty dollars a month on principal to be honest. I, yeah, I can I can get behind that too. Yeah, I I totally get I, that. I, I yeah. like I can't encourage this behavior. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Sawman UK is in chat. What what he is says, he saying? OMG, he said, "OMG, it's the Burger Boys." I'm sorry, chat. Sandwich. So I know I said we were going to get on subject and you know get to the topics we had planned. I need to talk to you guys. Elsa and I had to go through something like, and it's still traumatic. So. Uh, this past weekend on Saturday night, uh, <laughs> is there no one else saw man and myself? We did Elden Ring on hard mode. Essentially, it was a modded version of Elden Ring. Long story short, enemies got like four hundred percent health, sixty percent more mitigation. Blah blah. Hard mode. Elden Ring's already a hard mode. I mean, a hard game. But yeah. Anyways, when I, when I say we were doing a hundred damage to bosses. I am not exaggerating. We were doing 100 damage to bosses, and they had in, in crazy amounts of health. So go on. Yeah, like it was a ridiculous difficulty. So anyways, throughout this uh, evening, um, I learned something that bothered me, chat. So what do you... I don't even know how to uh, bring this up to chat. So apparently, Sawman thinks... Okay, let me just let me just speak normal logic. If you take two pieces of bread and you put like meat, cheese, whatever in between two pieces of bread, that's known as what chat? I'm gonna see who the first person that answers. If you put most things between two slices of bread, what is that? What are you eating, chat? What are you eating? I I'm just curious. I I I'm curious. Someone answer this for me, because I I. I to me, I call that a I call that a sandwich. Thank you, thank you, Mikashi. A sandwich. It's a sandwich. Um, if you go to if you go to Burger King, and you get oh yes, like saw man, I'm getting to it. He said two burger buns. If you put something between two burger buns, what do you call it? So if I put a a burger, you know, if I put a burger between two buns, that's uh, two two uh burger buns. That's a burger. I think we can all agree there. If chat, if I get a buffalo chicken, if I get a, if I grill me a chicken, I cut it up and I dip it in some buffalo sauce, maybe, maybe throw some lettuce on there. What is that? Oh my gosh. Someone said a hot dog is a sandwich. He's worse than saw, man. That's a whole nother conversation. Guys, let's, let's not get off track here. Okay. Oh, just kidding. Bert Sh Shemiro says burger buns equals a burger. Found Always. The, found the UK guy. So I think he was, they were responding to that from when I said, put a burger between two buns. Now, okay, virus says a chicken sandwich. If I take a buffalo chicken and I put it between two buns, it's a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, it's a sandwich, right? It's a sandwich. So that's what that is. So apparently Sawman feels that if no matter what you put between two buns, it's called a burger. If it's a, if it's his, his opinion is if you put it between a, a hamburger bun, regardless of whatever is in between, it is a burger because it's a burger bun. And yeah, I I don't I don't agree. My my definition would be if you put ground meat, like if you had a chicken patty, you know, like a like a ground chicken in there, sure, you can call it a burger. If you have hamburger, ground hamburger in there, yes, it's a burger. But if it is a a chicken breast, Tennessee, you know, you you have your you have your spicy Nashville hot chicken sandwich or you have your 
uh, buffalo chicken sandwich and it's chicken breast, it is not a burger. To me, it's a sandwich. But, you know, that that's the reason why we fought for our independence. So we could avoid yeah. this this nonsense 200 years yeah. later. This is why we threw the tea in the water so we wouldn't have to <laughs> live by Sawman's rule. Unbelievable. He wants PVE servers and everything's a burger. It's ridiculous. A uh, hot dog is a rolled taco, says Fox. Uh, Sawman says, you are all uncultured heathens who eat corn syrup in every meal. Do not lecture me on food. <laughs> Shimmer says sliced bread equals sandwich. Burger is just a subset of sandwich as well. I could, uh, I could see that. Rage says a chicken burger. You stop. Stop. What's a hamburger patty on bread? Still a burger? Yeah, I would classify it as a burger. Like two pieces of bread. Yeah. Like it's burger. It's a more ghetto burger for sure. Like it's not a like. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, it's still a burger because you got burger meat in there. I classify what is it a off the sloppy meat. Joe. That's the interesting one. Yeah, that the sloppy Joe is like the outlier. Honestly, I would call sloppy Joe. I mean, I wouldn't call it a burger. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start there. I wouldn't call it a burger. I'd call it a sandwich. I guess I wouldn't feel comfortable, but it's the best yeah, thing you it's, can call it because it's kind of like it's. You know, it's it's ground hamburger, but it's not in a patty form. Just like yeah. like if you do like pulled pork or something, like that's still a sandwich. So I think Sloppy Joe, you technically classify as a sandwich because it's not a patty. Salman sounds like an alien trying to sneak into America. Salman says, this is why the whole world hates America. You guys just make up your own rules. Eh? No, no, we're not making up our own rules. We're taking the rules that you tried to force upon us and we're making them better. The the whole world hates America for a variety of other reasons that have nothing to do with sandwiches and burger definitions, Saw Man. Yeah. We don't need to be gaslighted for this. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Now that we got that MMO talk out the way, let's move <laughs> forward. But let's talk about burgers some more. Because yeah, I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> Manwich, true. Yeah, you could definitely call a burger sound. I that one is uh less of a stretch, but I I, I totally I, I could see that. I could definitely see it. that makes sense. So chat, uh so recently, and a lot of you may have seen this, um recently massively overpowered or massively op.com posted this article uh from writer Chris Neal. Um and the article is titled uh, Ashes of Creation's latest Alpha 2 preview video takes a deep dive of the fighter class. Good title. Very true. That did happen. Yep. Um, so Steven responded to this article on Twitter, which is how I originally saw it. Uh, I'm going to let else read this one chat. Okay. So it says should I read through the entire thing or should we stop it? Um, the, I guess the rest of it is uh, barely relevant, but um, okay. the first paragraph, yeah, I guess the paragraph, the first paragraph. So they wrote the seemingly nonstop parade of Alpha 2 preview videos from Ashes of Creation continues this weekend as Intrepid Studios grants fans and followers of the Gank Box a granular look at its fighter archetype hosted by several devs and the human equivalent of an excited Pomeranian, Stephen Sharif. I so when I first read this, first of all, Steven Steven's comment on Twitter was funny because that's probably the most annoyed that I've seen him like respond to somebody with. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, and he didn't even say anything bad or, or anything. It was just it was just one of those things. But it's like, okay, if you're calling Ashes of Creation a gank box before we've gotten into test, before we've gotten into try this game, before anything like that, just show me on the doll where the PvP hurt you. Like, like, tell me where the PVP hurt you because that we, we don't have to go into a discussion on what the corruption system is, but we can all acknowledge that depending on how strict or how uh, lax this system is, there could be a lot of ganking or no ganking and to automatically call it a gank box. Now it's just, you garnered attention. You got us talking about it. It, it worked. Okay. But, yeah. And then the human equivalent of an excited Pomeranian, Steven boy yeah so boy. and this was my issue and just for any of you that want clarification i'll scroll this is the whole article so you see he has that opening statement and then he has a normal um i would say professional and uh, a professional and normal gaming article right just like hey they discuss the class mechanics skills tree icon by icon look at the abilities um 
just everything's normal. But this opening paragraph, and I think it's like Elle said, maybe it was meant to garner this attention and get some clicks on the website so we can see the ads or whatever. I don't know. But to me, it seemed personal or biased. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just normal PVE Care Bear bias. Ray, thank you for becoming a member, buddy. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um. Oh, wait, 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 what, 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 what? Grux became a member? Oh, thank you so much, dude. E-Man gifted five memberships. Thank you so much, buddy. Wow, thanks, <laughs> E-Man. Thank you, dude. So I don't know if it's just the normal gank box care bear stuff that we're used to seeing, right? I don't even know if it's that. I think there's more to it here. Because we're used to people saying, oh, you will not like this game. It's a gank box and blah, blah, blah. But then he went on to say this. Human equivalent of an excited Pomeranian, Stephen Sharif. That was personal. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you're a journalist. That was, you're not keeping it, uh, you're not keeping it professional. That was personal. That's a straight up insult to him as a developer, as a man, as everything, like. That that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And if he if he left it at the gank box thing, I'd be like, oh, it's just another biased article, you know, misinformed about the game, or sure. someone just providing their opinion. But him doing that and this, the, the Pomeranian thing, it seems personal, and I wonder why. Um and this is uh once again by Chris Neal on Massively OP. Wolfie is a totally a pink wolf and not someone who just adores his avatar so much that he lost touch with reality. He's been playing games since the days of Atari 2600 when PCs had been booted up. Variety of MMOs, multiplayer games, including Final Fantasy, Dauntless, Black Desert, and many others. So he's a gamer. He's a long-time gamer. Um, I haven't looked at the comments, but did anyone... Okay, yeah, I was about to say, did anyone say anything? Chris Neal, if you... Uh, I mean, MBM, if you scroll down... Chris Neal, why the free hostility here? Intrepid Studio grants fans and followers of the gank box. How do you know that the game is not out yet to test? We need to play that to know if it's true. There are systems in place to prevent ganks in PvP, like the corruption system. It might be a gank box, but we need to first test it to know that. Um, and then uh, about the Pomeranian comment, he says, what? Straight up toxic and unnecessary. What a weird thing to say. It makes it look like you have a grudge. Okay, same thing I said. It makes it look personal. Like, it just looks really personal. Okay, he does respond here. He says, okay, so L, scroll down to where Chris responds to somebody. So yeah. everyone's voicing these concerns, and then he says, Psst, hey, nobody tell this guy how in February there was a video where a caravan was literally slaughtered by another party out in the open. Yeah, so this this fills in with my with my something I wanted to talk about earlier. I we we have conversations on here. We we have open conversations. If people disagree with us, like we like to have friendly debates and topics about things. This is the the type of player that this game just does not generate interest for, like at all. And and I totally understand that perspective. Some games aren't for anybody. Like I I don't pay any mind to what is going on in the world of Palea or Pal World or or other games that I'm not currently playing because I'm not playing them. Like I I just don't care about those games they they haven't garnered my interest to want to play so i don't follow them for whatever reason this game garners interest from people that don't want to play it and they still want to talk about it and they want to talk about how it's garbage because it goes against what they want to play and so this guy commenting here it's okay like i don't care like some people don't like pvp games some people don't like yeah. pvp in their mmos there's plenty of mmos out there that don't have pvp or they have pvp in areas to where you don't have to engage in it that's not what this game is this game is not PvEers versus pvpers this game is pvx and so it doesn't matter where you are on the scale of how much you pvp or how much you pve we're all more or less meeting in the middle of hey we're going to be fighting NPCs, and we're also going to occasionally be fighting each other. This guy talking about it being a gank box about a fucking PVP system is just stupid. This is this is an uninformed, stupid take from a very stupid author. 
Like that, that's all there is to it. Like this is a PVP system. Caravans are PVP. And so they're going to show and they're going to label the title. Hey, it's a caravan PVP event. You can be PVP'd against if you engage in a caravan. Nice. If you came over to my house and I said, hey, you're going to, we're like, we're going to go over to my house. Like I'm going to make you dinner and then we're going to go out to the bars or whatever. You know that if you come over to my house, you're going to get fed. Like that's what's going to happen. You're in, you yeah. know that that's what's going to happen. If you participate in the caravans, you could die. Your character could die. And, and that's what happens. And that doesn't make it a gank box. That makes it a PVP system. They're, they're two completely different things. And so this guy trying to correlate a system with a gank box is just stupid. It, it, it is uninformed and basically he doesn't like the game. Now, maybe his editor or whatever had told him he has to cover this game, or maybe he just chose to do this because, you know, we want to, we want to hate write some things up, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's clear. This guy doesn't like this type of game, but yet he wants to to post about it because why not? It seems very misinformed and very biased. I don't like this statement. And here's the thing, chat. And I don't want anyone, um, and I'll speak for else here. I don't want no one taking us out of context. Like, Oh, because they disagree. You're going in. no, there's a different, I would rather read a well-written article from someone saying, hey, I don't think the corruption system in Ashes of Creation will work. I don't think it's going to be enough of a deterrent. Yep. Here's why. Here's what I'm basing it off of. I disagree that they should design the game this way. You know what? Maybe I don't agree, but let's read it. Let's understand where you're coming from. What are the points you're bringing forward? When they get emotional like this, that tells me that there's some bias or some emotion involved in this writing. And there's nothing wrong with emotional journal journalism when it comes to expressing your opinion on certain subject matters. But this and just and you can always look at an author's choice of wording. Where a caravan was literally slaughtered like this wasn't yeah, like someone in chat said <laughs> the caravan had a family wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, it was like virus said it was scripted to go that way for the purpose of the video. It was meant to show you the risk versus reward system. And in fact, it kind of showed you how it wasn't a gank box because it showed you the one scenario where PVP was an objective based uh, scenario. Uh, where it, you knew the risk involved with this caravan that you are mobile PVP objective. I yep. think this writer definitely has a grudge and I don't know who runs this website. Um, Cause I thought massively overpowered. Um, I actually used them in my throne and Liberty video. Uh, coincidentally, they had a good article, <laughs> a good article wasn't biased at all, but anyways, um, I would get a different writer to start covering this game. It, get a writer that disagrees or hates PVP all you want. That's fine. You know, give a, here's why it won't work. Here's why I don't like Ashes of Creation. Here's why I think it will fail. That's cool. But this screams bias and it makes your site look very, very bad and unprofessional. And I would highly recommend staying away from any author that's unprofessional this way. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. I like we we've, we've had conversations with, with other content creators that are very concerned about the PVP. Right. Yeah. Like we've had, if you guys have watched our channel, we've had very healthy conversations, disagreements about things. And we just talk about our perspective. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with people saying, Hey, I, I have questions about this. I have those same questions, guys. Like I don't want Ash Secretion to be a gank box either. I want there to be PVP systems. I want there to be a healthy player population. I want it to be fun. It's not fun when people are getting griefed over and over and over again. So I'm right there with you. I'm right there yes. with you. I do think that there's a lot of pros to the corruption system. And if done well, it brings more positives to the game than negatives. But it has to, you have to have your thumb on the pulse. You have to have at, uh, moderators around in order to stop people from griefing. Because once you start banning griefing accounts, people eventually go away. Like it'll still happen. Yes. But as long as you're quick to make those adjustments, it won't be a, a terrible issue. It'll just be one of those random occurrences, right? People, there, there are just going to be some people that you can't reason with on, on one thing or another. There are some players that are heavily PVE focused and the thought of any type of PVP happening at all is a no for them. You, you, they're, you're not going to have a, a conversation with them. It, it is a no, it is a done deal and that's okay. Like that's more than okay. It's clear that that's who this person is. Like this is the type of person that this is. No matter what they do, it doesn't matter how strict uh, because they're not even talking about corruption here. They're talking about a PVP system. They don't like the fact that 
the caravan got destroyed by other PVPers. So they're just from that post, and maybe I'm wrong, Chris Neal, but but it's like they just don't want PVP at all in their yeah. in their MMO. And I I don't understand why somebody would want to cover a, a topic of a game that they they have no interest in playing. I, I think it does a disservice to massively overpowered about this. I think it I think it's a disservice to Chris Neal who wants to cover other types of games. I think it's a disservice to other journalists probably in this same website that want to cover a game like Ashes of Creation because they're interested in it. But yeah. I that's if my I, perspective. If I, if I was an avid reader of massivelyop.com and I wanted to search for um Throne in Liberty coming out soon, you know, and I read this article first and then I had to hear this guy's, you know, if he had to write a whole two page summary of his experience in Throne in Liberty or, you know, summarize the MMO itself, I wouldn't take it at face value. I'd, I'd feel like I'd still have to go play it myself to get a, uh, or go to a different website to get an unbiased opinion. And that's something you should not have in writing. Have your opinions, don't have bias, don't have personal agendas. Um, yeah, Sawman my... says uh, maybe he had a Raid Shadow Legends sponsor to sell. <laughs> Everyone yeah. that gets that joke, I love you. Yeah, my my perspective on it is is I don't I don't automatically shut off a website. Like if I if I see a bad article or something, you know the journalists are they. It's the same thing as YouTube, right? Just because there's a YouTube channel that I don't like, I'm not going to shut off YouTube. I'm not going to I'm not going to not come to massively overpowered because of one journalist. But if I do see that there's an article written by a journalist like this from a situation that I, I just don't appreciate like the where they're coming from because it's too clickbaity for me, I'm not going to I'm not going to read any more of their articles in the future because they're I'm just not interested in it. And so oh. I I'll read this Chris Neal article we have. But now I'm I'm of the opinion that I will not read another article from him again, and uh, I'll just read other opinions and other articles from other journalists on on this site because yeah I don't I don't want to read stuff like this it's not hey. it doesn't interest me at all. So we have a comment here in chat from Barco. He says, "If they're uninformed, maybe you could give them info instead of saying they're stupid, right?" That's how content creators do. That's how ashes are needed, though. A content creator who gives info to others. So let me uh, address that and break that down and welcome on in. If they are uninformed, maybe you could give them info instead of saying they're stupid. I don't know if I used the word stupid. I did. I, I, you did? Okay, okay. I did. So... But, I um I'll, I'll let you I'll let you respond first. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So so that I said that it's a stupid uninformed take. I'm sorry. I and this is this is the difference, right? This is a journalist that's doing research for a game. It's their job to be informed. It's their job to be informed to write stuff to the public. If if somebody is on my channel discussing stuff with me or they're talking in the in chat, you guys aren't journalists. You guys are viewers. I I don't. I have not, and I will never call somebody stupid in chat because they're trying to figure out stuff from us, right? This person has done research. Well, you know, they're they're posting an article about stuff that they they want to cover. It's it's on them to provide the subject matter, and so because of that, they're coming from a point of view that isn't that isn't viewers, that isn't people that are going to watch a video on YouTube or something like that. They're forming an opinion to write an article. And from that perspective, this is a very stupid and uninformed like article about what they're talking about. If you don't care to know like what the corruption system is, if you don't care that of what the type of game it is because you just don't like PvP, you're going to write what this person's going to write. And that's my perspective. I, I don't think this is a good article. I think this person doesn't like PvP. And because they don't like PvP, they're going to just shit on a game for that reason, which I think is a disservice to the site. So if I could address that, I would say, regardless of if they're stupid, I don't think the person's stupid, but no, it's okay and that. fair to say, it's okay and fair to say that their take is stupid or yeah, misinformed. I didn't, yeah, I didn't say I, I they're think, stupid. I think... You know, misinformed is fine. Biased is fine. I don't think I. I don't think we really was unfair. Um, if anything, he might have been a little unfair here to Stephen. Uh, I would say it's unprofessional. There's a lot of things, and at the end of the day, I don't think it's any content creator's job to have this. Uh, like else was alluded to. Uh, 
this journalist who watched the stream and is obviously keeping up with the game to be properly informed. I would argue that this guy is informed about Ashes of Creation and its corruption system and is still calling it a gank box. I think that's the more likely scenario. I don't believe this guy just, you know, this got thrown on his desk and he said, and the head uh, editor said, hey, write something up on this. I pretty, I, I, I could do some research if you like, hell, we could do it live. I bet you this guy has covered or is aware of Ashes of Creation. Hopefully we can find something to prove that. But I would imagine if he's writing this article that he is aware of these systems in Ashes of Creation, but still feels like it's a gank box. The reason I do know that is I covered this uh, game on this channel and um, a lot of people are aware of the corruption system or the planned deterrents that are un tested and still feel like ashes of creation is a gank box or that the corruption system will fail or that the pvp needs to be scaled back etc cetera, etc cetera. that is not our job to make him informed and the argument that we should uh make him informed i don't know how else to get my message to him maybe i can message him on twitter but i've done over 100 and i got 120 something pieces of content on my channel on ashes of creation trying to explain stuff like this um, I would be open to sitting down and hearing a different, uh, hell, we always are open to sitting down and hear a different point of view. Elsa actually touched on that very well. Uh, there's a lot of uh, content creator friends that are not into PvP the way we are. I'm into both PvE and PvP, I feel, and that's why the concept of PvX is uh, welcoming to me. Um, and I feel like that's okay, but I feel like regardless, this was a very unprofessional, personal, and very biased article and it shouldn't be i don't know i don't see how one defends that um hey i'm going to scroll through some uh comments here um it's a valid point grux but it's the fact that he's a journal what did grux say yeah grux says i disagree that this dude is way out of touch he represents a valid view this guy represents a valid view of ashes in what context okay the gank box? Yeah, yeah. Feeling that Ashes of Creation is a gank box, sure. You can if so if that's someone's opinion, if that's their view, then that's their view. No one knows what this game is gonna be like until testing. We can only be, be basing things off the developer's vision and the planned deterrence that they have in place in order to prevent it from becoming a gank box. This it, other stuff though? I, I'm sorry, like I'm just gonna push back on on the uh saying it's a gank box is an opinion. It's it's not an opinion. It, it, I mean, it. Sorry, it is an an opinion. It's an uninformed opinion. A prediction. Like it's an it's an uninformed opinion on somebody that just doesn't like PvP. And if you go, like he provided a link, he actually did a coverage of the caravan PvP live stream as well, and he called it a gank box then too. He just he just believes Ash the Creation is a gank box. Uh, it says last November, Ash the Creation highlighted the act of moving goods from one place to another in a caravan, which was certainly an illustrative look at activity but ultimately was done in a vacuum with the devs in a private build that was a free from pvp threats and didn't really elaborate on how caravan pvp works that's been changed in the gank box's most recent gameplay preview which is all about caravan pvp this time around and so yeah i mean maybe he's trying to garner attention he got us to talk about it and and that perspective but but the point is is if you look at what the corruption system is, yes, some games in the past that have had this type of system have been gank boxes. Other games like the BDO's karma system, I, I have a lot of friends that play BDO as well. And they say basically killing with the karma system almost never happens. They, they say it's just not something because the, the, the risk far too much outweighs the reward. And so people don't really kill in city zones in that game for that reason. And so it's a sliding scale. You could... It very well could be a gank box. It could be. And it could just basically function like every other MMO ever where the risk is so high that nobody wants to kill anything because you lose too much. And so from my perspective, I'm not going to jump to a conclusion on this in pre-alpha 2 about what this game is and what this game isn't because a lot of these systems are sliding scales. And anybody that follows this game objectively would say, yes, it could be this way. It could be, or it could not, because it really depends on how they tone these things in. Objectively calling it a gank box or calling it a Care Bear friendly zone or something like that, it, it's a it's a way of being derogatory in the MMO space without really having to acknowledge that you're. We know where the where the uh, writer is coming from from this perspective. I don't think I personally think that that's a stupid way to approach writing an article. I think I would yeah. take it a more objective approach, but. That's not what they want to do. So, yeah. 
well said um yes and thank you for liking the stream appreciate all you guys being here thank you so much everyone that followed on twitch like the stream all that stuff thank you for the gifted subs again really appreciate you guys yeah i think uh his previous article like you said really did that well where he so he's been covering this game it's obvious that this is the guy assigned to cover ashes of creation it's just his opinion that's just his opinion that it's going to be a, a gank box that's been changed in the gank boxes like he's just calling he didn't say the mmos he didn't say ashes of creation that's been changed in the gank boxes most recent gameplay preview like you you see where we, you can't like this is not the, i don't feel like this is the guy to defend i think this is just an unprofessional writer i don't think it's uh anything about being misinformed if i had to just go off his track record yeah it's it's his opinion on what the game is and he's covering a yeah. game that he doesn't like he does say in the video about the pvp thing he said you know this is up to you the viewer to decide whether or not mm -hmm. what, what exactly did he say he said sorry let me read the last whether this gameplay is an enticing peek at the world of ashes or a warning to stay away is up to the viewer to decide so feel free to watch the full video below so he's basically saying like, yeah, like, do you think it's this way or this way? I think that's fine. I think objectively, that is a great way to put it. Uh, I, I think, I think as a, as a writer, you need to put your opinion in there. Uh, he put it in there in the most quick and <laughs> crude way possible. But, but yeah, I, I don't have a problem with people questioning whether or not this game is going to succeed or fail or whether or not it's could be this or this. It's just when you automatically pre alpha two say that it's one thing. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm going to yeah. disagree. I'm going to disagree pretty. This is probably the most I've disagreed with somebody. I'm not pushed. Like, I'm not going to relent on my opinion on this one. I, these, these are not articles I like to read. So, mm -mm. yeah, I don't, uh, reading something you disagree with. I feel like is I love reading people with different yeah. opinions than me, different takes. I love debating with those people. I love hearing those people's sides. Um, that's why during the, even though I got overly bored, like not bored, but I got like over it really quick the uh, caravan attacker risk conversation that was going around for so long. Yeah. Like it was good hearing those people's point of views and hearing yes. some of those people's uh, perspectives and how they what with different mindsets. I was able to at least, I was able to listen to them, but oh, you know what? I get that. I, even if I still disagree, I get where you're coming from and I get that that makes sense. That's actually a good take. I still disagree with it. I yep. do at least get that that's a good take or maybe there's some room for compromise here and there, right? With some things, it's just like, oh, you're you're just being toxic. You got ulterior motive, and you're putting your foot down. No one can change your mind. You're not even listening. You're just waiting for the other person to be finished talking so you can get your word in. Yeah. Um. Someone says, I mean, let's be real here. It's not exactly an in-depth article. It's one for search engine optimization. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Makashi, exactly. I actually have a video coming at all. Uh, that's actually one of my next Ashes videos right there uh covering that same subject i actually passed that subject matter to narco a long time ago but i don't think he's going to do anything with it i did a forum post on that actually makashi last october i think it was i think it was last october i did a reddit post and a forum post on that same subject matter and i'll be covering it in a later video but yeah anyways let's get out the negativity um what i would like for us to do is see how the rest of the community felt about the recent fighter showcase so as you guys know uh else and i did a special friday uh voices of bear episode where we talked about this uh fighter archetype showcase live with you guys we live reacted you got our first impressions before the stream we laid out clear expectations and then those expectations were uh well, I'd say they were met. <laughs> and so you guys got to see our in real time uh, reaction to that information. So we haven't really, you know, went to the forums or anything like that. Uh, I will say that I am excited to see what everyone else thought of. So if you guys go to the forum and want to follow along with us or obviously just watch it on the video, I'm going to pull up the official feedback forum post posted by Intrepid here. Let me make sure you guys can see that. I, I, before you say anything nice, I just want to say mm -hmm. what a perfect time to piggyback off of somebody who we don't agree with, with their, their very standoffish take by mm -hmm. providing constructive, like there's going to be people who provide takes here that we're going to disagree with and notice how our, our tone will be different <laughs> from, from that these is... takes to this one. So just, just as an example, I just want to be clear. Like we're, yes. So Yeah. Well said. I love that you brought attention to it. You know why I like you else? Because we think alike. 
and I was gonna do that at the end, but you, 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 you knew it. You, you knew it. See, uh, like I was saying to the guy that said, "Hey, you know, maybe not call him stupid, disagree with him." Here's why um, I think listen to. Uh, here's why I think listening to me is great. Now, <laughs> here's why I think our uh, show is good, and why I think our, the community that we foster is so good. So, like Else just said, kind of piggybacking off everything he literally just said. That was someone that we disagreed with, but he was in what I would refer to as an extremist, like disrespectful. Forget what you think. It's how you presented the information. So we, we, we can barely attack the point that you made because it's, it's just surrounded by a bunch of negativity and toxicity. We are now going to read opinions that probably, I don't know, disagree with us, but we're going to probably do this and a uh, I would hope. I, I would hope that there's a respectful <laughs> post here. Sometimes, sometimes you get some wild ones. Like, why are you on the Ashes of Creation forums if you feel this way about the game? Uh, yeah. But uh, I predict that I, that stream was so good that I predict that at least ninety percent of people are like, you know, yeah, liking it. I, I read through this earlier. I think the best way to go through this nice is you know how they have the likes on the bottom. I mm -hmm. think uh to to make sure it doesn't take up like our entire live stream i thought the best way to approach it was if the if it has three or more likes then we read through the comment and we kind of talk about it but yeah there are there are definitely some opinions i disagree with but the best part about like the ashes of creation space in general people that are following this game uh as a whole people are interested in this game the the main thing is they want to see this game be the best possible game that it can be and so you're going to see a lot of give and take different points of view because we all come from different mmos we all come from different perspectives and we're providing feedback from other games that we played and oftentimes when i read feedback on here there's some really good stuff that i didn't think about and i'm like wow you changed my opinion on this you th this is yeah. actually a really good point and so it, you're coming from a point to where people want to meet on the middle ground because they all want to see the game succeed that's not the same viewpoint in my opinion from said journalist that was he he's not coming from a viewpoint to where he wants to see the game succeed he he already has a viewpoint on what he thinks the game is from my perspective he's not interested but he's covering it so that that's where these these viewpoints are coming from in my opinion well said uh for some reason i couldn't see the likes i think i'm signed in i'm not signed in now you know, did I get banned off the farms because all the crazy? Okay, there it is. It, I think it's letting me log in now. There we go, chat. <laughs> I was like, why can't I log in? Um, here, let me get to the article. I guess uh, general discussion is it? Yes, here we go. Fighter archetype preview shown in March live stream. Yes. Okay. Feedback requests. Alpha two fighter archetype preview shown in March live stream. So Vagnar did what he does, uh, post the questions. What are your thoughts on the abilities, the animations, VFX, and, you know, detailed bullet points and what they want people to respond with. Um, and what uh, Elsa suggests is that we pretty much look at each uh, comment with uh, at least three likes. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I'll start with the first one, the Dark Sorcerer. Warrior class, happy with the new size of the source. Not too big, not too small. Good balance here. Sound effects look good. Blitz, how high vertically can you use this skill? Could a fighter blitz up a node wall during a war? Uh, Elsa and I talked about this being a problem in ESO before, yep. and it looks pretty obvious that you have to at least match the elevation, which you won't be able to match the elevation outside of a keep wall. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. I don't think you can scale. Like, you're not going to run up the wall. You have to be matching that elevation, which is how these things are usually balanced in games. Um, they, they're they pretty much given feedback per skill, environment, the way the team set this up. The windy weather intro looked amazing. The way the grass. OK, so pretty much, yeah, I wanted to see this general feedback. Suggestion for the class showcases moving forward. Would love to see class showcases being broke down into segments, a close up view of look of the class and how the class interacts with its environment, walking, running, climbing, jumping, swimming, general movements. I don't think that, I mean, I don't think that's necessary. I think they would all do that the same. Yeah. The only, the only one that I would want to see is the walking and running because some of them are supposed to have different movement speeds. So it'd be nice to see the comparison. I thought that was, I, yes but i would but, think that'd be tied to like skills and stuff well yeah. I, if that's what they mean then i get for, that, yeah. for archetype yeah so like yeah. rogue is supposed to be faster so it'd be nice to mm -hmm. see like a side by side of them but yeah i i don't know yeah i can i can push back on most of this as well i agree with you each skill against one target 
uh, I think they do that. See, stress tests where we view class in a 3v3 battle, PvE combat. I feel like we're missing a lot of A and B here. Stress tests in a 3v3 are similar. I'll be honest. Um, I think what this person said is fine. I I, I, I totally get that. Um, I just think the way that they did it was literally perfect this time around. Personally, like I love the exact formula that they was to stick through this. Yeah. Uh, going forward, I would I'd be satisfied with that. I I will say this, coming from the guy that wants to see combat and wants to see PvP, I my concern with them doing like a PvP like 3v3 style thing is there's going to be a discussion on balance for what the skills are instead of True. objectively looking at what they are. Like like there's plenty of time in my opinion, there, there's plenty of time for balance future on down the road, alpha two, beta one, beta two, those sorts of things that what the skills look like, I, I think is the bigger point that they're really trying to look at. Like, Hey, does this class look cool? Does this look mm -hmm. like something you'd want to play? And, and balance will come later. That's, that's easy to, to tweak and adjust. So pretty much just limiting the distractions to feedback. Is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of going off of what they've said in the past about why they didn't show PvP. Like, I think that would be the main focus instead of, hey, does this class look cool? And I think that'd be a miss if they did that. But that's my so, perspective. Just off the image, I want to read this one. Just okay. off this image they have here. So this is from Sonic Explosion. I oh. thought the fighter archetype had a very great showcase, and I don't have any glaring issues with the overall archetype design that was shown. So I want to focus my feedback on the class and weapon skill trees that were shown. Mm, I like where he's going with this, and I like the image. Um, one, he says, I think both skill trees are very disorganized. People generally view things in a certain order. Normally, we will view things from left to right, top to bottom. I think it's very strange to have the beginning of the branches appear in the bottom middle of the current implementation. Implementation. I think this mock-up is more intuitive while retaining the same practicality. Imagine the red lines are directional arrows. It obviously doesn't have to be in this exact format, but I would like to see the tree be more in-depth with this approach. Yeah, I am very critical of their... I know it's placeholders, maybe, maybe work in progress, but sure. I do not like their current skill trees. Uh, the weapon tree got a lot better. I would say it's almost ready. Like, I would say it's almost good and good to go. I like that. But their weapon skill tree, you could I think it's just there to be there. Like I do I personally, um, you know, as far as feedback purposes for pre-alpha stuff, I personally don't like where it's at right right now. Um I'm I i do not want to judge it too harshly, but where it's at right now, I'm not liking it. Sure. Uh just from an aesthetic purpose, uh or excuse me, viewpoint. Uh but yeah, I, I just the first one with the Ranger, which was even more placeholder, I just felt like there was just an illusion of choice. I feel like they could do it a lot better, a lot different. But yeah, we'll see how it uh, all comes together. Um, number two, there are two types of options within the weapon skill tree. The plus sign icons, which offer choices, and the plus sign icons, which seem to just be flat stat increases. Yeah, in the weapon tree, I think there should be more of a former and less of the latter. The choices that the plus sign icons give are much more engaging when you try to carve out your build's identity. I wouldn't even be against removing the plus sign icons entirely. Yeah, some of them are just like uh, upgrade to your skill. The one that does dramatically changing of ability should definitely be a different icon or stand out differently um, to the user. So for sure, I I, I, I like this post. Uh, literally, I'm going to yeah. click like on it. Yeah, me too. Um, I think that was some good points there. That's very it's it's a very interesting take. Like I didn't I didn't get to this point of my opinion on the skill trees, to be honest. <laughs> like as long as the UI is intuitive for it and it, it looks like it's easy enough to follow and, and make those choices, I it doesn't bother me too much. And so I, I can see their perspective. I think this makes sense. So Yeah. And 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 chat, once again, this is work in progress stuff. Like that UI team is constantly upgrading stuff. Things look so different than they did it's just a huge last year. Difference. Yeah. So From I mean Ranger. by Alpha 2, this, you know, they're probably gonna have this, you know, really looking good. And they just wanted something presentable, which it was. It definitely was presentable. And if anything, maybe even okay. Uh so don't get too hung up on it. But yeah, um I, I think they they will eventually go in the right direction with that. Um we gotta read one from Gaul. It's got four likes. I'll give it five so that it justifies it. Boom. All right. 
Uh, you want to read that one? Sure. So this is Galwood, guys. Galwood is a longtime contributor in the space. Like if, if you're on any Twitch stream, like he's always there contributing. One of the most well-informed people, I think, in the space, I would say. Like as far as people that just know the game, Galwood knows the game very well. Uh, his opinion is the visuals and sounds were all fantastic. Renkai reveal looked good as well. The customization section of the weapon tree was very eye-opening, and I'm excited to see how the weapon trees interact with different archetypes and group compositions. Destructible environment was nice too. Yeah, that was, that's yeah. not some. Yeah, I, I I forgot about that until he brought it up. Uh, we hadn't heard about that feature in a long time, so I was wondering if it was still in. I will say that having fighter and tank use mana feels wrong as martial archetypes. I understand there are game design reasons for it, but it still seems counterintuitive. Overall, great stream. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I I also think it's counterintuitive that you're a physical based ability, a physical based class, and you're using mana. I, I understand, mm -hmm. but yeah, I I agree with that perspective also. I think that that I guess that would be my critique. Is yeah, I would want that to be more yeah. physical based. I I'm of that mindset too. Someone actually commented on my video with that same exact take and opinion. And um, I totally get it. Like when Steven was on a mana, he was able to do nothing but swing his basic attack. And mana sustain looks really tough right now without a bard in the group. And mm -hmm. um, I, I, and you know, I always say I like that mana sustain stuff. I don't, I, I wasn't paying attention. I forgot to pay attention to that when I rewatched uh, if Steven was even using mana pots. But regardless, um, I think they should. I know it'll like like he said here. It it's just it makes sense from the game design reasons, but it just seems weird a fighter not be able to use a skill. His he's off cooldown. What's stopping him from singing swinging the sword? Uh, I was as I was watching it earlier. I had a little thought, and I we could probably go into detail with this, but my thought was a a simple gameplay design adjustment, which would be. There's some skills that require mana and some that don't. And obviously, sure. you want to make the more spammable or less damaging skills, the ones that don't require mana. Still keep cooldowns. Every skill should have a cooldown. But maybe some things don't need mana. It just needs to be off cooldown so that, uh, I don't know, I think it'll make combat flow better. Maybe you lean this towards more physical-based abilities than mag um, uh, you know, mana slash magic. I don't know. Maybe mana can get some too. Maybe your basic wand... Uh, I forgot the name of the skill, uh, but your basic wand attack, your staff attack, whatever, is the same property and doesn't use mana. I don't know, but maybe they're trying to do like New World did and put uh, more of an emphasis on your basic attacks and make those matter, and sure. that's their thought. So it's tough, but yeah, I think it's a fair opinion. Yeah, I, when you when you kind of think about some of the skills, like it's like. Okay, is it really physical where you apply like a debuff to somebody to where when they move they start bleeding? Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, does can anybody actually physically do that? So, so like a yeah. lot of the abilities, can you jump forty feet in the air and then land in the ground and and make rock spikes shoot up in the air? Like those. So I, I get the perspective why it would be mana, and so I'm not. It makes sense for me to have to see mana and physical have its own bars, but at the same time, like I, I'm not going to be so hung up on it. Like this game, this breaks the game. It's just like how you kind of view how it's going to function. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I I can get behind what Galwood said for sure. So nice. Um, I scrolled down. I found a comment with three likes here from Dark Blood Eagles. He says, "Please no RNG on the skills." We talked about this recently. I think I was talking about this uh, in Discord as well. Vale, me, how yeah. you doing, buddy? We we talked about it on the live stream also. Yeah, about uh, like you know things like crit chance, evasion, accuracy, and how they could um, you know, make uh, no two battles always the exact same. I think a little RNG is fine. Um, yeah. It's funny because ESO, I hated the RNG with like proc sets and all that other stuff. Too many calculations in the mix, but especially in a tab target game, I think we both agree a little RNG is fine. I yeah, we we talked about it on Friday, and for those of you guys that weren't here, I'm I'm trying to find the the comment to get to it here. But but my perspective on on the RNG is like a lot of people talk about part of the reason they don't like tab target games, and this isn't me, guys. I'm not. I'm, this is not my perspective. Uh, but a lot of people, they don't like that it's like a rotation of abilities off a cooldown in the exact mm -hmm. same systematic manner, manner. And so they're like, yeah, you activate this ability for your buffs, then you activate this, then you activate this. And it's it's a lot more robotic for tab target MMOs, which a lot of people like, and that's okay. Uh, throwing RNG in there, 
allows you a chance, in my opinion, for skill shots. So what that means is, is when you do proc a status effect, you may want to use an ability at that point in time to boost or amplify your damage. And so it it changes the cadence and the rotation in PvP, which I like. Part of the reason, mm -hmm. like PvE rotations, where you just rotate off of parses in order to maximize your damage output, it's fun, but being able to read and react to different status effects that are happening to you or that are happening to your opponent increases a skill gap that a lot of other parsing does not do. So I'm a fan. Uh -huh. of, I'm personally a fan of it. And so if people want to disagree, I think that's fine. I think that's just a difference of combat perspective, but I like it. Nice. Um, I know we're an hour and a half in, but maybe we can... Uh quickly go through this or uh maybe we can start next stream with it but um ashes codex ha i had a, i have a link there in our official vlv preview sure uh where you can kind of hover over the skills and stuff like that you want to jump to that yeah okay um maybe there... we can just go through it shortly or and i don't know sure we we did a three-hour live stream on friday we don't have to do another one <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Trent? How you doing, everybody? Welcome on in. Um, oh, before we move on to this, uh, Grux says some fighters in league have mana and they are great, so it can work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. I can get behind that. Um, the UI will improve performance as a top priority for now. Facts, Banjo. Reduce. The only thing I hate is having reduced accuracy. Yeah, I think uh, that's going to be something interesting. Like you're going to have to spec into accuracy. I will tell you this, Isaiah. Um, I was playing Throne of Liberty recently, and the accuracy stat is uh, pretty annoying for when someone's like a higher level than you, especially. <laughs> like I tried to attack somebody that was max <laughs> level, seeing every attack miss. I'm like, okay, there needs to be. And I, guys, I'm no game designer, but please let me know if I'm wrong here. Yes, high level armor or a higher level character should, you know, have a lot of evasion chance against someone low level that motivates you to get higher level. Okay, sure, I get it. You know, sure. they don't have a high accuracy sword that they're hitting you with. They didn't invest in the stat, whatever. But I feel like there should be a base percentage. Like, okay, you <laughs> no matter what, you can never be reduced under 20% accuracy or under 15. Cause it, dude, I was in Throne of Liberty well, hold and on. I knew. That. Sorry, real quick, guys. Can you tell for before Nice tells you this story? Can you already tell from the underlying tone that Nice had a not so fun time? Like I don't know the story. <laughs> I want to be clear. I don't. I don't know this story, but I already know the story with what he's saying and what he's complaining about. And <laughs> I just wanted to know if you guys noticed it as well. Go on, Nice. I want to see if I'm right. <laughs> yes. So, man, I go to a little, they got this cool, uh, Throne of Liberty has this cool little uh, dueling arena in town, and you can just walk in there, and uh, it's kind of like how Guild Wars 2 had in their PvP lobby. But anyways, dude, I wanted to just test damage in the PvP, and I knew this guy was high level, but I figured he'd humor me. I just wanted to see use him as a test dummy, you know? Yeah. Man, and I went up to that man with my great sword. I was putting in the rat -ta 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 combo. I did the whole flurry skill. I was just going in. That shit said, miss, 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 big miss, 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 not even close, miss, miss, miss. I was like, God, come on, man. Does gear matter this much? It reminded me of leveling up in New World. It was so bad. Like, yeah. someone was nine levels above you, and it was, you just did not exist. No matter how much y'all play them, it didn't matter because they're gear. And, like, it's a, it's a funny story because I went up to this guy. I was just missing every attack. Dude, is that is the most disres critical miss. <laughs> it's the most disrespectful thing ever. It happened to me, and it's so weird. I have this same story on two different games. Let me actually let me pause real quick and go back to New World. <laughs> While I'm leveling, there is a bunch of people around the race around the way shrine. So just to give you a little backstory, you leave the way shrine and you got like ten seconds of immunity, and then your PvP flagged. I do this. There's a guy standing there. He's not aware of me. Well, it's a third person game. So in hindsight, he was aware of me. But I was like, he doesn't know I'm going to flag up here in about three seconds. Three, two, one. I got behind him for the backstab. I'm, I just start. And it wasn't misses in New World because it's an action combat game. I hit this dude 14 times. Do you guys know the feeling and how disrespectful it is to see someone 
typing as you're doing a combo <laughs> like you know the little chat bubble how games tell you if uh, your opponent or whoever is typing mm -hmm. i saw this dude i saw a freaking chat bubble above this dude's head in new world and he's like bro are you serious and i'm just still wailing on this guy he turns around and three shots me I was so mad, but in Throne of Liberty, I, I had the exact same story. I ran up to this guy, except for this time, it just said, miss, miss, miss. Dude start typing, and he just types, go level up first, bro, LOL. I'm on a Korean server. I found the English, the guy typing in English to disrespect me. He said, <laughs> go level up, LOL. <laughs> I was just like, God dang it, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's... I, uh, that, that, that's my opinion on the accuracy. Long story short is that I feel like there should be a minimal, like you should not go lower than, I don't know, 20% accuracy, 15, 10, give me 10, yeah. <laughs> 10, please. You know? Yeah. I, I had a similar experience playing throne and Liberty. You know how, like you have your points of interest that are highlighted on your map when you, when you explore them. And then there's the area outside of that, that you haven't explored yet. And so it's all kind of cloudy or whatever. I was like, I'm going to go to a higher level area. I'm going to put my, like, I wasn't PVPing, but I was like, I'm going to see like what ads I can kill, what, what to explore and everything. And I got to too high of a zone and it was just like, literally it was NPCs, like two levels above me. I couldn't hit them. Uh, I couldn't mm. hit a single one. I was like level 13 and I went to like level 15 or level 17, this zone like that. And literally that disparity from NPCs, I couldn't hit them. And so it wasn't like, like they were literally gating you off. Like you, it's not that you can have skill and like you can, you can find a way to win if you, if you, you're just a better player or something like that. It's no, you can't participate until you get to this perspective, this point of view. And so yeah, uh, it, it was super interesting. I, I had a similar outcome happen in new world as yours as well, where we encounter people and I was looking for a fight. I, I don't care about dying. Like I'm, I'm just trying to figure yeah. out like how the combat's going to work. And I run across a guy and he's got hatched on the back bar and he literally let me rotate on him, like rotate <laughs> skills and abilities for like two or three minutes. And then he just started throwing hatchets at me. And he, <laughs> and he he killed me by throwing hatchets, dude. Like I went and hid by on a tree. And I'm like trying to pop a potion, and he's just waiting there. Like he didn't move. He didn't have to move. He just stood there, and he's like, "Yeah, you come up from around the tree. I'm gonna throw hatchets at you." And yeah, I, I, I died. And so I was just like, "Okay, well, apparently gear really matters here, <laughs> and so I can't yeah. just kill somebody." So. Uh, that's never fun. That's never fun yeah. during the uh, loving process. Did you guys play the OG PvP game Lunia? I have not. Have I have not, it. no. Um, Trent, welcome on in. Uh, Shimmer says, we need VAs, which I think will stand for voice actors in this scenario. He says, we need VAs in the game. I don't want to read text in a future MMO, but I understand it's deaf easier with text. My unpopular take is that AI voice actors are are so good right now. Obviously, not for main cast, but side quests. What do you? How do you feel about AI voice actors? I, I look at it as a tool. I, I I understand the debate between artists and and tools and stuff like that. And you know, the like the the AI art is an interesting discussion. I, I feel like my oh wait, hold on, else. Norforce just raid raided oh, with boy. a party of 30. Welcome on in. Welcome in, guys. Thank you for the raid. How are you guys doing? Thank you for the raid, Lore Forge. Appreciate you guys. Welcome on in. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so so my perspective on I, I see it as a tool, right? It's a tool. Um if if I haven't noticed that from AI voice acting personally, like I feel like I can still tell most of the time that it's AI voice acting. And, and I think because of that, because it doesn't sound human, it just kind of sounds weird when I, when I hear it more often than not. And yeah. it, and it makes, it ruins, it ruins, like you see a lot of YouTube channels, right? Where they use AI voice for, for all their stuff. And it, it immediately shuts me off to wanting to like follow their channel because it's not, it's not mm. human. It doesn't sound, yes. it doesn't sound very good. Now I'm not saying it's all bad or anything like that. I'm not saying it can't be better. If, if team, if games want to outsource those things because they, their bottom line, like it, they don't think that that matters. I, I'm, I get it. Um, but yeah, I haven't found the thing that where I think that, that it's really good personally. And so I, I think it's more of a turn than anything. It's same thing with like, like AI art. If they don't, if they don't delve into it deep enough, like you'll see yeah. like, 
15 toes or like an extra earlobe <laughs> or some shit. And the minute I see yeah. that, I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, like it, it, you've now made something that went from cool to bad. And yeah, I, not a fan. Yeah, I'm indifferent of it. Um, I say just get regular voice actors, but if it helps them move the schedule along and it's just uh, voice acting, I would be okay with it. Yeah. I get a little, I, I will admit, I'm a little bit more critical of AI when it comes to like artists and um, creative directions, lore and stuff like that. But with voice acting, not saying it's lesser of a job or less of an yeah. art. I'm just saying like, I'm a little bit more like, okay, if you guys had to do that and it's for a side character, okay, maybe. But yeah, I can, I could kind of see that take. Uh, Salman says that was the most obnoxious alert I've ever heard. Yeah, I got a really loud raid sound, so I don't miss them else. Um, <laughs> Uh, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss another raid because uh, sure. it didn't remind me last time, and it's super obnoxious. Everyone thought it like they, it was playing from another page. It scared the heck out of everybody. Yeah, that's the point. I, the raids are going to wake us up, you know, when we're just like, you know, you're listening to go. your nice ASMR, and you're just relaxing and listening to Ashes before you go to sleep, and it's just like, <laughs> and you're like, what, 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 what? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm up. I'm awake. I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, Maybe I, I do need to find a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, AI, like the way I view AI as a whole, and it really depends on the individual situation, but it's a tool. And a tool yeah. is only as good as the person wielding it or using it in a scenario. It can be good. It can be cost-saving. It can be beneficial. But it can also, if it's used lazily, uh, it can also be detrimental. And so that's that's how I view it. And I know artists have a differing perspective. I, I understand their perspective as well. But we're not... I, I don't... I'm not informed enough to dive into that whole debate. So... Yeah, that and that's my yeah. Likewise, I'm not really that informed. Yeah, like Shimmer says, you gotta listen to Open AI's Figure Zero One speak. It will change your mind. Yeah, I guess okay. I do because yeah. Um, I guess let's uh let's delve a little bit into the skill tree. Uh, maybe sure. just a couple of skills. Um, we kind of sure. talked about the skill tree just recently, but um, like that skill, uh, which I guess is something that you have to start your tree with, which is the art of war. Uh, maybe um art of war switching forms no longer triggers cooldowns or costs combat momentum interesting yeah see this skill this, this skill tree design is just so i will say interesting to me but like which one of these skills would you say is one of your favorites thank you for the follow as i asked that question someone in chat asked me so i'll be honest chat i have my favorite skill visually though blitz sold me dude like if you guys right. saw the live react stream, Blitz was just visually cool. Like a gap closer, 30 meter range can activate it mid air. I'm loving that we're able to attack, uh, use most attacks while mid air. I first noticed it the most in the maid showcase when they did that jump blink, and I really liked it. But if I had to give like my actual favorite skill, it's one of these two. I think it's Rupture. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, it's definitely Rupture. Rupture is like what's, I, I think sold me on the fight archetype because we had our gap closers. I already knew there was going to be gap closers. But uh, Elsa and I talk about this a lot. I hate uh, range combat, like fighting against someone and you just spend the whole time S-keying away, hitting me from range and feeling safe. And I hate long TTK in games. Not that it can't be fun, but I hate when 1v1s, and I know Ashes isn't built or designed around 1v1s, but I hate when a 1v1 scenario is five minutes because of self-healing being so powerful yeah i think this wound status is genius we talked about this before last week but i think this wound status is genius man so let's talk about the rupture skill itself deal physical damage apply debuff to the target while the debuff is active the uh, target the target acquires five wound stacks per second that they are moving and then after five seconds they take heavy damage plus additional damage for each stack of wounds so it's like a delayed burst which is something i like as well based but off the key moving. part of that yeah yeah the key part of that is the wound stacks yep they gain these for moving so if you're continuing to run away from me which i would recommend you do <laughs> <laughs> uh if you um are running away from me that's just further um punishing that and something I want to discuss in a video soon um, is this rock, paper, scissors element starting to become a, uh, well, I guess I kind of already said it in my recent video, but that rock, paper, scissors element, uh, we're starting to see that more and more with this fighter showcase. We got to see sure. it a lot. What's funny is it seems like the 
the fighter is the rock to a lot of scissors right now because I see an anti cleric uh thing with uh this being which skill had the anti heal was it uh I think it was this one I thought it was this one I could have sworn they said it was this one chat yeah each wounds go to brutality so you go down one to maim and then to the right is brutality each wound stack reduces oh, target healing is. received by 0.5 percent and target damage mm -hmm. mitigate so yeah Yep. Each wound stack reduces the target healing received. But yeah, so then I'm looking at this as anti-cleric, right, chat? But I'm also looking at all the gap closers and this rupture wound stacks as anti-ranger. So I'm seeing anti-ranger and anti-cleric stuff, mostly anti-ranger, mm. especially anti-ranger uh, when it comes to terms of those rock, paper, scissors. You get what I'm saying? So um, if I... Um, I don't know. I got a lot of thoughts in my head about the rock, paper, scissors elements, but that's where that's what I'm seeing. I think that's this was the first time I was watching a stream. I was like, oh, this can counter this, this can counter this. I when I watched the tank archetype, yeah. I was like, I don't know this is what cool. you are doing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this that exists. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but this, I'm like, oh, I'm starting to see stuff, you know, to be uh countered. Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite skill you saw? Um, so so really quick before that, do we were talking I, I don't want to lose this because uh on the pre on the feedback request, there was a really mm -hmm. good article on the second or third page where people were talking specifically about what you're talking about, the ranger versus fighter uh interactions. And their mm -hmm. concern was with the amount of gap closers that the the fighter has, it may lean too heavily in their favor. Whereas like like if you're a ranger and it's like, okay, well you have your backflip and you have your uh, arrow barrage, you know, your, your what I, I can't remember. I always forget the name of that skill. Like, okay, well, you have these two abilities. Well, the fighter has three gap closers. And so now they can just stay on top of you if you try to get away. Is that, is that really fair for Ranger? And so, mm. um, I thought, I thought it was interesting and I thought it was a good point to bring up, especially now that we're talking about it. Um, uh, the only thing I will say is I, there has to be a give and take, like there, there absolutely has to be a give and take between range and melee. Uh, yes. Nice. And I are obviously we do play more melee currently. I did start off like I, I have played plenty of range uh, on other games uh, with other classes and everything. I, I I'm a night blade on ESO. So you guys all know that I run a bow. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that, that is, uh, a foregone conclusion. So my point is, is I, I totally understand the range perspective. All I will say to to kind of add on to that discussion about gap closers and distance and everything and, and kite ability is you have to also just take into account that rangers are already operating at a distance in a lot of situations, in most situations, and you have to take into account that starter distance where you're at. So if I'm fighting nice, right? Like nice, you're going to be a ranger because you've been, you've been bragging about how you're a ranger for like eight months now, and then you just change your mind <laughs> off of one video. So, so nice is a ranger, right? If he's operating from 30 meters away and he hits me with with whatever he's going to hit me with, when I turn around and look at him, he knows that I, I am now focusing him. He now has 30 minutes to decide what he's going to do. That doesn't necessarily require a skill to do so. So we have to also just keep, I mean, we'll, testing will happen later, but that distance being closed also has to ta be taken into account as well, in my opinion, for this entire conversation of... Uh, mm interaction between ranged and melee classes yeah and um chat's bringing up some good points about the ranger ranger has cc as well yeah uh, and let's not forget the maneuverability the uh evasion uh potential of the ranger all those flips we saw and everything like that they weren't gap closes per se yeah they have a lot of uh tools to keep them evasive so maybe it's not a complete counter maybe these two cancel out but we'll see yeah, maybe versus um, a fighter, when they turn and look at you, you use your camouflage. You don't want to try to evade because they can gap close those. Maybe you go invisible, whereas when you're fighting a rogue, then you invade with your evasive abilities, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Just something to take into account, in my opinion. Uh, so while I was looking for a comment that you were potentially uh, talking about, I found an interesting post with nine likes here on page three from Alice. Okay. Uh, and you'll know it when you see it. Uh, you it'll jump out while you're scrolling because it has a uh, a gif attached to it with the fighter from the original showcase. Yep. And this is from a PI member. Yep, I found it. Okay. Um, variant says there go Alice talking about action combat. Must have watched the showcase with his eyes closed. <laughs> Nice. Since you're a melee enjoyer, check out your page, your post on page five. But yeah, we'll go back to here the uh, post then. 
So I thought this was interesting. They said, where did these skills go? Active blocking? Uh, we definitely saw that. Dodging? We definitely saw dodging. They did it in the first within the first 15 minutes of stream. Matter of fact, he dodged before he uh, even showed the blitz, which was uh, the first skill, I think, if I recall correctly. He definitely dodged when he uh, dodged across the water. One thing I will say is, I mean, obviously, we didn't see this backwards dash, this dash skill. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're still working on it. Maybe it's something in the kit and they just couldn't fit it on the bar. But I remember a long time ago, they said each class was going to have a unique dodge. Am I right, chat? I feel like I read that in the wiki somewhere. And I feel like maybe they've gotten away from that because currently, at least, at I least, do remember that. Um, every class has the same leaping dodge roll. And maybe back then, during this time, they were giving classes unique dodges and this was the fighters. I don't know. That's just me speculating. I don't know. But I do remember. Um, I do remember that. Thank you. Yeah, 27 in chat, only 18 likes. Thank you so much. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the likes, everybody. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I, um, I, we... I do remember that as well, Nice. That I'm pretty sure they said that everybody, every archetype is going to have their own active mm -hmm. dodge. I, I don't remember uh, where. JR says, do we know a fighter has a block? Uh, yes, they, they definitely active block. Um, this person says, we need those back. Not a 2004 tab combat. A lot of people feel tab combat is really outdated. Um, and I will admit, like I admitted in my video that I posted yesterday, you guys check that out if you haven't already, but, um, I will say this showcase right here is what inspired me to get my alpha two key. Like this was the one, this is the combat I saw. And I was like, yeah, I, I I'm going to love this game. Um, yeah. this, this person said, remove RNG blocking. There's no RNG timeout timeout. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to dive into this. First off, they did show active blocking and active dodging. That's still there. Remove RNG blocking. As far as I am aware, chat, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, there is no RNG blocking. This is not Guild Wars 2 or traditional tab target. They still have active block. We saw it with the heck, we saw it with the tank if you didn't see the fighter do it. You saw it with the tank when he held up the blue shield. Remove RNG CC. Okay, that's a thing with the trip status effect. But I feel like that group, might yeah. be. I I feel like that could be good or bad depending on how you look at it. Uh, they said luck is not a skill. A random CC can ruin your combo since each CC has a current different rotation duration. Excuse me. I I will say it kind of throws off your timing when you can't choose when the CC is for sure going to happen because you want to line up certain burst combos and you want to time this with that. I, I get that point uh, of all sure. the points. I do get that, but I do like the RNG CC status. Like, Hey, you know, you get the status effect to pop up on your screen and you uh like, okay, I know I'm under the shaken status effect or the, the shaken status effect for f and i know that status effect lasts five seconds for the next five seconds i need to be aware that hey there's a chance i'm gonna get stunned so let me move out of position let me realign uh, myself or just be prepared or go make sure i have my cooldowns ready for my cc break etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. i do think there's strategy involved in that as well though yeah i i will say that like when we're looking at Ashes currently, when we're looking at all these different live streams, we're looking at it an ingredient going into an overall recipe. And so, like as an example of for what ESO does, ESO has six seconds of CC immunity. They also have a movability pots to where like if you if you want to have that moment of immovability for your combination, you can equip that. We don't know if Ashes is going to have any of these types of mechanics or if they're going to have their own type of mechanic. We don't know if passively they're going to be able to mitigate or reduce CCs or, or anything like that. And so I, I understand what they're talking about here. A random CC can ruin your combo. That's the point. That's the point of PvP. When you fight people, they're going to do other stuff to you as well. They're going to CC you. They're going to hit you with damage. Like me taking a ton of damage ruins my combination as well. Like, like that's part yeah. of what, that's part of what combat is. And so, um, I understand this perspective. I just disagree from a, like, I like the idea of like shaking some, like providing the shaken status effect and then stunning them on the ground because then you're, mm -hmm. you're adding skill shots to the combination offensively. And from a defensive perspective, like you said, if you see that you're shaken, you have to react defensively in a way that you weren't going to do before. Other classes are interacting with you and you need to properly approach them. Uh, so didn't I they have a status effect that guarantees the trip. Like, I remember the tank, had, and the tank is supposed to be a CC bot, right? 
like I remember watching the tank showcase or the cleric showcase, and there were some skills or synergy, not the cleric showcase, excuse me, the day and night cycle stream. There is some skills that you trip shaken targets or you yeah, you basically there's ways to guarantee it and time it that way, now that I'm remembering. Yep. So there is that. Um, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I think it'll be fine. I think we gotta play with what it is, but I, I think they they're wanting what they saw in the melee uh stream and i don't think we're too far gone for that i don't think there's been a huge direction of change but i i get their complaint uh let's see they go on to say make blitz usable without a target so that it's used for mobility i think that's a good take i could see them doing that um wasn't it i mean that he did gap close and didn't hit the target so did I he feel like he had to have a target selected and he just didn't make it up there because he didn't match oh, the elevation. Okay. But then but okay. I mean I don't I don't know for sure though. That yeah. could be um I don't know. That that could be the case. Uh but with it honing to the player when he sure. jumped in the air, that leads me to believe that it's a single target okay. uh, ability or ability that needs it. Um but I think if you do that, it's weird. I saw the tank have a gap closer in the PvP caravan uh, showcase where they use theirs like that, their gap closer. Pretty sure that was a tank. Um, I think if you start doing that too much, like not gap closers without requiring a target, you kind of start like, um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm on a fence about that because then you kind of take away from the coolness of the mage's blink, you know, or yeah. the ranger's uh evasion kit and stuff like that thank you for subscribing wine and, and the fighter does have a gap closer to where you don't need a target and so i think having different mm -hmm. I, I don't want all of them to function the same way like all i don't I, I don't want all mine to require a target i don't want all of mine to not require a target so i i, I agree with you like i think blitz requiring a target is fine um mm -hmm. for this reason to what was i gonna say I, 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 so I, I do want to say two things as far as like this dash ability that they showed I think this could, because it was a melee weapon showcase, this dash could be attached to the weapon or to, True. so what I will say is, is I don't know if this disappeared or not. It would be disappointing to me if it, if it has, cause I like dash, like I, I think it's awesome. Uh, so I, I would still want to see this as well. Um, as far as there was one other thing that I was going to bring up and I can't remember exactly what, so CC is a different, <sighs> yeah. As far as like the tab, the tab combat, 2004 tab combat, I, I know some people like tab combat. My only perspective is, is I don't want Ash's combat system to be like other games. I don't want yeah. any, like well, Nice and I talked about this earlier in, in this specific podcast. I don't want Ashes to be a remake of any other game that currently exists. I want them to go their own way. I want to have them to have their own system. I think it having tab target action combat is fine, even coming from an action Andy playing New World. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's fine. I just think that you need to provide other types of things. And so uh, I don't see 2004 tab combat in this game. I, I don't know where that's yeah. coming from. I think that's just, I mean... I hate to say it, but I, I, it looks like it's an action combat bias and they want more of that, which. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and like, uh, you and chat said there was, tar uh, leap had no target. I think there was another gap closer that didn't require a target. I think, uh, blitz doesn't need to be traveling 30 meters without a target just for, <laughs> just to differ differentiate a between the skills. Closer. <laughs> oh man. Just to get out of there. Yeah. Like take that mage blink. <laughs> Yeah. Um, someone brought up the blue shield. Uh, so, uh, Sir Onsington said, um, I Todd, I timed the blue shield. It was a four second activate activatable that blocks one instance of incoming damage. There were two times I noticed where Steven didn't hit him and it dropped after four seconds could be a coincidence, but the blue shield also disappeared consistently after blocking one instance of damage. I wonder if it's like a new parry skill. I wonder if that's also, remember, they're getting really in-depth with these weapon trees. What if that's just a sword and shield passive in the weapon tree? Uh, maybe it's on a 10-second cooldown, but once every 10 seconds, you uh, negate, completely negate the first hit or the next hit. Um, that could be that. Pa that could be a weapon passive. We don't know. Or it could just be an active skill we haven't seen. Like, uh, remember, we saw in the PvP caravan showcase that they had that blue tether that we did not see in the tank archetype showcase. So, yeah. Yeah, there, there's just uh, there's no telling. Um, Ravadua says, 
RNG is just the mechanism by which you simulate nuance in the finer motor skill actions your character performs with each skill and which the game can't fully simulate via player input due to complexity. Yes. My goodness, did Conf- is Confucius interested in <laughs> Ashes of Creation? <laughs> well no, said. That, that, that's well said. Yeah, I, I agree. And I like that nuance. Uh, we, like ESO has some sets that provide a, like blood spawn, percent damage, percent chance of gaining resistances off of damage taken. I like those types of interactive mechanics because it gives you a bonus based off of something. Like it, you're not always going to be re- be able to reliably use a specific something in those situations, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that provides uniqueness and variety to combat, and I think that's a good thing. But yes. yeah, not everybody's used to that also, and we're going to have different perspectives, and that's okay, and that's more than okay. Uh, Fuppo says, I think some peeps are thinking that combat is supposed to be like a competitive fighting game. RNG is a mainstay of games that have evolved from D&D, et cetera, and just in tab target in general. Yeah, just a core component. It's just, I mean, tab without the RNG is uh, doesn't work as well with everything being a homing missile, essentially. So having some accuracy and evasion stats in there definitely makes it uh, pretty good. Um, he says, with lunging assault and excerpt given the fighter CC immunity, Blitz being a targeted skill is too powerful and unfun to play against for range classes. I know this? this from experience because I've played Archer and Mage in Archage, which had a similar fighter class and the fact this that this game doesn't things? have i no this is this is still the same thing the same gif the same post from uh alice oh okay i'm sorry okay. um i know this from experience because i've played archer and mage and arc age which had a similar fighter class and the fact that this game doesn't have an iframe dodging doesn't help i will okay i will say i do agree with this guy on that I do not understand the point of them having this dodge roll in game. And it could be because they don't have the stamina mechanic tied to anything or at existing yet. They have a dodge roll, which is just going to get distance from certain AOEs that's coming down or whatever. I don't understand the point of a dodge roll in the game that, and if the dodge roll doesn't have uh, iframes. And I know you have accuracy and evasion stuff, but you should have a dodge roll that uh, has iframes. It doesn't make sense. Even Guild Wars 2, a tab target game, has you have two dodges mm-hmm. and it makes sense. You iframe for that. It, I mean, they, they have a hell of a cooldown, et cetera, but like you have a dodge, but it doesn't have iframe. I'm not sure why that design choice exists. Of all the things this person said, I do agree sure. with that. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense to me because, like, right now, when you watch the PvP caravan, just still the Guild Wars 2 dodge, yes, they yeah. actually look kind of similar from what I remember. But um, I uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I definitely back that opinion. I wonder what they will do because when I watch the PvP caravan showcase and when I watch this last showcase, I mean, really any showcase, but uh, the mage showcase, um, and I put it in my combat guide I made last year with everything that we knew about Ashes of Creation at the time. Like, there's no downside to just constantly holding block and constantly dodging. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm, I know no PI in chat can confirm this for me, but I'm pretty sure you can go out on the battlefield in the current build of Ashes of Creation and just hold block. And there, I mean, yes, there's some chip damage, it looks like sometimes, but or you could just infinitely dodge roll. I could be wrong, and there's just no visual indicator of that, and it has a cooldown, but yeah, so I. I can get behind, okay, I can get behind the iframe. I actually really like the iframe system as well, uh, but I'm, it's it's not a deal breaker for me. Like, I think your two choices, you already mentioned it, so I'm not gonna bring it up too much. You have a choice between choosing accuracy or iframes of, of mm-hmm. like how you want it to have happen. I'm okay with both. I wanna be clear before anybody like takes this out of context or anything. I'm okay with either or. I can see, yes. I can see a case for iframes. I can see a case for accuracy. What I will say is, I'm I'm just gonna push back ever so slightly on this person's discussion about uh, it's too oppressive for Ranger. We already briefly mentioned it before, um, but there I'm, I'm trying to brief I'm trying to pull this up. I'm trying to do my best narc impression of knowing exactly where something occurs in a live stream and just pulling it up almost immediately. Uh, but but 
there is more to a ranger toolkit than just their ability to dodge. There's more to yes. a ranger toolkit than just their ability to uh, avoid incoming gap closers. Like like I already mentioned before, the amount of distance you have versus your opponent is something you have to factor in. Uh, if if you know that they're within, like I, I'm. I'm pretty confident in saying that 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 30 meter gap closer will be reduced. Like I, I'm already confident in saying that <laughs> like that's probably yeah. going to be a thing that's going to happen. And and yeah, I, I think that's just my perspective on it. But but anyways, my point is is you have other tools in your toolkit, and I'm trying to pull up this point in this Ranger live stream where you know when after they're they're building and then the the second wave of NPC of uh, enemies comes in, and a, here it is. It's at 1744. I'm I'm gonna brief. I'm just gonna send this to you to to kind of highlight a point because it's easier to see than it is to talk about. But let me let me send you a YouTube link. Go to 1744. And the PvP caravan update. Yep, yep. I just linked it to you. 1744. Yep. But this there's a point right here where they go up the hill and a ranger goes into camouflage and look how close they are and where they disappear. They disappear at like the 10 to 12 meter mark where all of a sudden somebody on your own team using camouflage is gone. And so what I'm trying to say is if you have skills that operate at 30 plus meters and somebody turns and looks at you and they start to get into that range where they can gap close on you, you have active abilities besides a void that literally like a fighter can't do anything. Like you go into camouflage, they're not going to see you. Like they can't, they can't like, look at, look at this point that we're showing with what the current camouflage is. The minute you get like 10 plus meters away, they're invisible. And so, and when they're a little bit closer to the, it's a predator style scene, which is great. But yeah, just, just basically saying like, oh, gap closes are too much for, for range players. It's not true. You're, you're not looking holistically at the entire ranger picture, defensive picture. Now, when we get into testing and we test range versus melee, we're going to yeah. be able to get that feel. But I can't definitively say right now, fighter is too overpowered compared to ranger because literally you can go like it's basically invisibility once you're at a certain distance. Yeah. And so that that's where I'm going to push back on. And let's not and let's not forget cooldowns exist. So <laughs> this gap closer remains at 30 meters, remains incredibly powerful. I'm sure Intrepid, if they don't want to change the design of it. Look at this guy that just flew. Like, what was was this the tank? Yeah, this is the tank. Look at this. <laughs> Go to timestamp 1804 and watch Dread just free aim. He didn't have a target with his gap closer on the tank, whichever ability that is that they didn't show during the uh, tank archetype showcase. But dude just zooms. Yeah. Like, it seems like everybody's got, I don't know, I'm starting to be on a range team. Yo, you range people, y'all are not going to be able to keep your distance, bro. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. It's kind of, bro, y'all have no chance. There's a reason you get in a melee slot, because you will be using it, because everybody has a 30-meter gap close. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie yo they f they are so f i ain't gonna oh, lie man. these gap closers i will compromise and i think i need to start pushing this narrative that it needs to be i know i said i wasn't gonna call for nerfs oh my god but, are you gonna be that bro, guy right now no no but I'm else scared. i gotta be this guy now so that we can enjoy fighter later because sure. they're gonna they're gonna make petitions bro we need to go ahead and start compromising now like okay 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 let us keep the distance <laughs> <laughs> just we'll, just give it just give it a long cooldown. Yeah. Which is something I actually believe. Just give it a long cooldown. Honestly, I don't want no one doing a 30 meter gap close every 12 seconds. Uh, I, you 40 second cooldown, 30 second yeah. cooldown. Come on. Like it's I think that's fine. Uh, out of all the things to critique, like the 30 meter when I saw 30 meters on the gap closer, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, I I can get behind that being a jump. I, I would be surprised if it didn't go down. Like 30 meters seems ridiculous. I'm yeah. pretty sure isn't snipe and ESO meters like are 30, cool now. Isn't snipe and ESO like 35 meters or something like that? Yeah, like so when you're not near a keep. Yeah. Yeah. So so like That's I'm insane. thinking. Yeah. So it's it's almost like snipe for a gap closer. I'm I'm totally behind that perspective. All I'm going to say is is like when we get to testing, I like playing every single combat 
uh, mm-hmm. play style from my perspective. And so if something feels off from like a give and take perspective from range versus melee, I will absolutely be, be saying something. You don't want a new world situation yeah. to where people yeah. can just get away. You don't want an ESO situation to where range players are getting like, remember a few years ago when snares and roots were just on every single yeah. skill and you couldn't move like neither one of those play styles are fun and they're not fun for two different reasons. And so I, I want somewhere in the middle for both. Uh, and so I, I want that give and take situation. Uh, but, but yeah, just automatically looking at one skill and saying this screws over Ranger, I I'm going to disagree with. So even uh, though it is, thank you for the meters. follow Barbara, <laughs> even uh, though it's yeah, 30, 30 meters. meters is crazy. Uh, someone asked what's the range for snipe and, uh, AOC here. I could pull that up right now. That is, uh, that's scatter shot here. Snipe 35 meters. So snipe and AOC is 35 meters in its current iteration, 35 meters. The gap closer is 30. Yeah. And you guys remember how far away they lined up that snipe. Uh, 20% increase chat. Yeah. So 35 meters. There you go. Hmm. But yeah, this has been Fantastic. another long one. We yeah. somehow hit two hours. Uh, we'll probably be calling it here. Um, That's a good call. Uh, is there anyone, uh, anyone to raid? I wonder. But um, regardless, uh, make sure you guys are followed, subscribe, like the stream. It helps get more people in here to discuss with us. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure you guys are following and subscribe to Is There No One Else as well. Uh, thank you for the raid. Uh, shout out to Lore Forge, you guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, this has been some. This was some good talks. Yeah, I I got I got a couple of videos that I have lined up. I think I'm gonna start pumping out some uh, AOC videos. Uh, I have a busy month, so I think really AOC is really what I'm just AOC videos for the most part. Uh, we got a uh, certain MMO has some testing coming up. We got PAX Day testing at the end of the month. Uh, I assume Throne and Liberty is going to have a global release soon, maybe this month, maybe early next month. Uh, we got Mortal Online too. Elsa and I are going to yep. play that at some point. We'll figure that out. Um, just to kind of, and now, it, uh, just to clarify, Mortal Online 2 doesn't have much in common with Hazardous Creation, especially combat wise. Uh, but Elsa and I, um, I know, I think it'll be fun to play Mortal Online 2 for the political aspect and the social aspect because. I plan on jumping on voice comms and, you know, kind of seeing like if I get PK'd and stuff like that, how does yeah. that make me feel? Or can I empathize with the Care Bears, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're, we're, in, we're hopping into a gank box, guys. A little, like, a, 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 an actual that, gank box. Argue, actual gank box, you know, <laughs> no corruption. Yeah. So no, I, I think it's going to be interesting. Like, like the, how I'm kind of viewing like our, our voyeur into mortal online two and throne and Liberty is like, okay, throne and Liberty is how you're going to see how combat kind of feels like more mm-hmm. or less, like kind of a benchmark comparison mortal online two to me kind of feels like what the community will be like. Yes. Like, yes, yes, like yes, yes, getting yes. that interaction and teamwork with other people. That's why I'm interested in that. Cause then you can kind of play both for a little bit and marry the two and be like, okay, I think this is going to be awesome, but now I have a better idea of if this is going to be awesome. So Holy crap. I got an idea for a series or a joint video or a video or something. Okay. Okay, hear me out. Okay. I'm listening. Just picture picture the titles and picture the titles in like one of those sexy YouTube fonts. You know, picture the thumbnail. So yep. you got a sexy YouTube font. You got an MMO chick with like cleavage showing. So you got to click the video because it has an anime chick with, uh you know, cleavage. Naturally. And the video title says... How I prepared for Ashes of Creation. Nice. And it's just us doing social stuff and more online too. And then it's us doing like Guild Wars, I mean, excuse me, Dona Liberty combat and Dona Liberty large scale combat. There we go. Man, you sound kind of like a content creator right now. That's crazy. I know. How I prepared for Vera. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would be a lot of fun. That's, I was kind of looking at piece mailing it, but yeah, like doing a bigger overarching thing is kind of cool. Like I was, I was looking at those for the same thing, but yeah, that's, that's the bigger picture. That's, that's a yeah, really I good mean, point. Long so long term, um, briefly before we call it, I would, I do want to say like 30 minutes ago, I was like, yeah, we don't want to make it a long live stream. And we were two right. hours and 10 minutes in. It did remind me, uh, Burns commented on my, on my live stream on our live stream on Friday. 
And he's mm-hmm. like, I don't know if you remember, but early on, we're like, hey, we don't want to make this a three hour video. And then it was exactly three hours. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So he, he gave me shit. He's like, yeah, I'm listening now. And you said it wasn't going to be three hours. And I'm, yeah, he, you were wrong. <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, Barbara says, how are y'all doing? Just found your channel and came for my daily dose of Kofi. And welcome on in. Uh, per- Peranut says, keep up the good work, guys. Love both of y'all videos. Thank you. Uh, Barbara says, out of topic, but do you think the sword looked too small on the Renkai? No, I must say no. I think it looked just right. But uh, I'm hoping that we do see a varying a varying length of great yes. swords or two-handed weapons. So I'm hoping there's going to be some skins, even if they have the same hitbox, some skins that are just a little bit longer, you know? I am um, I am a Gugs. Like, I, I do like the great sword in Elden Ring. I do like the, the big colossal weapon, so I can get behind it, so... Yeah. Completely agree. Hair or not. <laughs> uh, um, Stagger will be a determining factor on Ranger against Fighter for sure. Um, just give me a 60 yard range on your bow so you, then we can keep the 30 yard gap close. All right, buddy. <laughs> Wookie says Steven hates range players. I, you know what? I, I like him already. Um, but yeah, I'm. We're gonna call it here. Um, let me see if anyone's on Twitch. Jamie's uh, streaming. Jamie. Oh yes, awesome. Um, here, let's see, chat. We Who are else? going to raid over into Sir uh, Jamie while he builds momentum. But yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, we will see you next Tuesday. This has been episode forty. Thank you guys so much. Peace. See ya.